Fleek Whistle. That, that was live. <laughs> well done. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everybody. So, uh, thanks for tuning in for episode 10 of Reign of Olympus. We made it to double digits, guys. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Uh, weeks. I don't think we have any big announcements or anything uh, other than we're still alive, which is good. Just, yeah, please share, follow, subscribe if you haven't already. If you've got a Twitch Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, link it to your Twitch account. Then you get Twitch Prime for free and then you get a free Twitch sub each uh, month. We still get the same money, but you don't have to spend a thing, which is great. So, yeah, check if you've got a Twitch sub handy and if you can give us a follow there also uh for those of you on browser or able to be on browser i don't think i've actually t said this on stream yet we are now using the DD &D beyond twitch extension which means you guys on browser can keep an eye on how the party are doing all of their avatars that should be down the side and then if you hover over them or click them i can't remember then you can see their stats their health and see how they're doing, so it's a little bit more interactive, so you can keep up with them and probably remind them better than they can what their saves and things are. Other than that, we will do a quick recap and then go to the intro. So I won't ask you guys because every time I do, you're like, I don't know what did happen. <laughs> it's so, better if you say it anyway. Yeah, rather than waste yeah. time. So at the beginning of the last session, we had Gavriel waking up in the infirmary that he was first stabbed by something. T-shirt. Yeah. Well, seemingly. Oh, uh, thank you. I can't see who that is, but thank you for streaming. Oh, it's Dan. <laughs> thank you for streaming. Thank you for subbing. So yeah, so being stabbed by T-shirt for some strange reason, and then waking up... Alone, party not there, Tisha not there, that three stab wounds in him, went to find out where the rest of the party was and what happened. It He seemed to be maybe like a few minutes to an hour or so behind or in front of the party, wherever he went, until such point as. Meanwhile, Mercy was like, what the fuck, as also Gavriel tried to stab her. A short fight ensued, and then the other Gavriel scarpered as quick as possible out of the shrine, as Kaya and Runt kind of watched him go by, not knowing what's going on, obviously. After a quick, he tried to stab me. They gave chase, chased down the streets, and after losing sight briefly, after some weird mystical stuff happened, bumped into original Gavriel. They then realized what was happening and attempted to track down Diet Gavriel or Gavriel Lights, or I can't believe it's not Gavriel, if you will. <laughs> and after a series of capers and pursuits, they did manage to catch up. Not before, however, the shape change or whatever it was took the form of someone that Kaya recognized, someone significant to her, someone that apparently shouldn't be there. And she had basically a bit of a breakdown, not expecting to see this person. Not really having time to deal with that, though. Gavriel and the rest of the party ran on ahead to try and catch it. Gavriel slower than usual, so kind of keeping with Kaya because he'd been hit with a poisonous dart. They finally managed to catch up with the shape changer, which had taken the form of a random woman they didn't recognise, and kill it in front of a big crowd of people. But luckily this is Sparta, so it didn't seem, at least, to cause up so much of a fuss. The... Episode ended with everyone feeling a little bit solemn for various reasons. Gavriel feeling a bit more reaffirmed in his faith, Kaya visibly shaken, and dragging this body of the shape changer basically to show as evidence for when Gavriel's party finally arrived in Sparta, hopefully clear their names and stop them being executed for treason. And that is where we'll pick off on the pick up on the way to wherever you want to go. So we will cut to intro, and we will be right back. Ah, uh, jeez. Uh, Sorry. Now, before we start, do you, do you want to drop that one again, Ken? Uh, I want to know that the character I'm playing is Gavriel. And the imposter character that was some kind of a shapeshifter thing is obviously Gav Fake. Mm -hmm. 
So you get reverse favor. Uh, yes. <laughs> hey. DM gets to choose when to hit you with disadvantage. <laughs> well, I do That's anyway. Fair. That's kind of my That's job. <laughs> See, okay, so you guys are walking along. Is it Runt or Gavriel that has the body of this woman over their shoulder as they're walking uh, along? I've still got Gavriel. it impaled, I believe. So you're kind of carrying it almost like a knapsack. Yeah, like, like a little have a sack. Yeah. Okay, is there any... Where are you guys heading? Is there anything you want to do in the meantime? People are, obviously, as you pass, giving you glances. Because you have Didn't we get them. told about, like, Justice Square or, like, the uh, the area we had to go to? Mm-hmm. I can't remember Justice the name Market. Of it. Yeah, it was Justice was Market, because it's kind of named so because it's displayed out so people can peruse and window shop the various things that are happening to those that deserve justice. Bit sadistic, but again, it's part of So yeah, so you just continuing to walk with this seemingly dead woman on the end of your trident? Uh, if no one else seems to be heading another attraction or wanting to divert us? Well, like I say, people are giving you looks and whispering and there are guards around that seem to be giving you looks and talking amongst themselves. Um, champion of the arena, you might want to say something out loud so people know that it's you. I don't know, I'm kind of enjoying the spectacle, if I'm honest. <laughs> you, could, you could at least make them go away for a moment. Fine. Gentlemen, fellow Spartans, this is Spartan business. Uh, go about yours. <laughs> oh, that was okay. Roll a <laughs> roll persuasion. Oh no! <laughs> God help me. <laughs> Not his dumb stat is fine. Yeah, actually, I've got plus three to be. Uh, no, I haven't. That's perception. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got any modifiers on persuasion. Uh, that's a thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, you say that, and some of the crowd tend to disperse, but a couple of the guards do come over to the group. Like, what's going on here, then? And they're not, they don't seem to be aggressive towards you, but the guy at the front is talking openly. The guy behind, you can see, has his hand on his belt close to his short sword. Um, well, gentlemen, this is, uh, well, I've, I've, we've been doing your job for you. You see, this, this thing on the pointy thing, the trident. That's what it's called. Um, that's a shape-shifting assassin. Like we've we've been cleaning up messes in your city, which you should have been responsible for. We're we're hard to keep the peace right now. The only ones disturbing the peace are you with your uh, your spectacle over there. Who did? Who was it? You said you were. I. Um, runt, champion of the arena, favoured by Ares with this mighty spear. Uh, I'm surprised you don't recognise me. No, we get a lot of... Yeah. But uh, that's right. Well, he does, like, the other one does recognise the spear or seem to. He takes his hand off the belt and kind of whispers to the guy in front of him. Alright, right. Alright, well... At least do us a favour, maybe don't parade it around like some sort of flagpole, it upsets the locals. You know, maybe, you know, try and be, be a bit more discreet about it and get it to where you need it to go as soon as possible. It seems to be starting to uh, melt. And you look, and this thing is like... a body-sized like, sack, then? Not on me, uh, believe it or not. But yeah, you look at this thing and you turn around and like the hair of this woman is like starting to fall out in clumps as you're walking. And the flesh, like the top layer of flesh seems to start like sloughing off. I don't know how you pronounce it. Like falling yeah. off in yeah. bits. And to reveal <laughs> kind of this raw, kind of grey, very like sinuous flesh underneath. <laughs> Is there any? Um, can I take a quick look at it and see if any way I can try and like stabilize, try and d- delay the decay? Uh, make a medicine check for me. With pleasure, bear with. Because I can't remember what my freaking stat is because I'm a moppet. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, 17. 17, okay. You have a look over at this thing and 
try and see if there's any way for you to stop the decay, but you realise it's not doesn't seem to be decaying. Like the flesh over the top is peeling off and like the teeth appear to be falling out a little bit and things like that. But the actual grey flesh underneath seems to be quite normal. You gather maybe this is like its true form underneath that now it's dead. It's kind of it's reverting back to that slowly as it decomposes. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we seem to be okay for now, but just be careful of making a mess as we go. But I think we should get there pretty quickly. Um, there is there is one question while we're going. Um, is a dead body going to be enough? Maybe we shouldn't have turned it into a kebab. Oh no, we definitely should have. Well, well, well. I hope you're good at um, t- convincing people that this was the thing that did it. There. Are the guards still here? They're still stood there. Yeah, they kind of. Well, you still oh. got this thing impaled on a trident, so they kind of. Oh, well, well, we'll put it on the floor and try and remove the trident and carry it as much as we can with all the bits falling off it. Um, I want to try and see if the guards are willing to accompany us to the justice market, as they can explain that they've seen this thing that we're carrying around and the, the bits of fake skin and hair and things falling off it might lend some uh, credit to our case. Okay, the one front kind of looks around, looks at the mess and goes, looks at you all, especially, and just goes, yeah, that's, to be honest, it's probably a good idea that you're not left to your own devices. Yeah, justice market, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we're headed straight to the justice market now. We're meeting, um, right. what's that chap's name? Isn't it Brasidus? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yay, my notes worked. <laughs> well done. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, let's hurry along, shall we? You smell. You okay. smell. Yeah, and they kind of <laughs> take up position on either side of you as you're walking. And they um, escort yeah, you to I'm, the justice market. I'm going to make sure that I'm walking half a step behind Kai. I'm just going to just have my... One of my hands on her shoulder and just just give it a gentle squeeze and help her along the way a little bit. Okay. Is there anything you want to do on your way there, or are you just kind of heading straight there? Oh, I think the, I think the sooner we get there and get this matter dealt with, the better, because I think Brassidus kind of did say time was of the essence. And the sooner we're not trailing body parts all over Sparta, it would probably be a good thing as well. Yeah, yeah I imagine they were once doing shopping with the, uh, the fishy corpse. I think we should possibly well, get a waterproof sack. You'd think a city like this would be used to having it. random body parts flying around. Only when I'm in town. Too shady. Okay, you guys head there. Uh, you, As you're walking on your way there, you see Septimus is waiting basically at the entrance to the Justice Market. He is... And just looking on edge, and as soon as he sees you guys, he comes to. Do you head over? I take it. Uh, yeah, I assume so. Are we going to uh, rush over and say hi? No, I'm just going to stand here with a random corpse and just be like, "Oh, look at us! Are we pretty complicated?" Too fair. That does seem like a very mercy thing to do. Fair. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll be lined for the uh, the call. That'll be later. Right, come on, go. Sorry, sorry. It's good to see you lot are all in one piece. I saw Gavriel. See, you found him, Gavriel. Uh, What the fuck has happened? What the fuck is that? Um, Yeah, that's that's the shapeshifter. You found it. There was an actual fucking. Okay, right. I honestly, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I thought you were just a bit mad. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, fair. that's... <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you better bring it along. We've got we've got Brastus and uh, and Ariston waiting. So, right. Well, I don't suppose you know of anyone that might be um well-versed in what exactly this thing might be. You could perhaps back us up, should it be a question. Um, Any priest or anything? The people that are on trial are fairly well-versed in it. We were hunting it. Yeah, but I'm not entirely sure they're the most credible witnesses. 
but you know in well, a case where this is meant to be the evidence in their favour. Well, Brastatus is a ranger general, so if anybody could recognise it, he would. Oh, sweet. Let's go throw this thing at him then. Yeah, he's... Not not literally. Don't... Not literally throw it at him. Yeah, when, he, when on, he's not drunk off his mind, he's quite astute. <laughs> yes, he's quite good at poetry as well. Excuse yes. This yeah. is one of those things that I don't want to know again, isn't it? Mm, probably. I right, can't bring it along then. Jeez. Uh, uh, th- yeah, this thing now is basically all kind of mush and flesh. Uh, mm. It's completely stripped of anything recognisable. Let me see if I can bring up a picture for you guys. So you can see what it now looks like. Once you're making your way in... Doop a doop a do. Yeah. Where where are we seeing this? Here. Yeah, don't worry. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, this is kind of what you're I looking at. Yeah, picture of my ex. <laughs> yeah, it is quite a. It's an androgynous, like I say, very grey skin, quite sinuous, bulbous head. Usually glossy eyes, but obviously the eyes are very glossy now. Anyway, since it's dead. But yeah, it's it's got like the clothes that um, just a simple like tabard that it's wearing. It doesn't seem to have any. Those of you that might actually want to look, doesn't seem to have any gender. Again, it's, it just seems like this a drop androgynous humanoid mass, and there's just last bits of like maybe a fingernail here, a bit of f- flesh here, and like a couple of strands of hair where it still hasn't decomposed. Yeah, you guys make your way to the main plaza. There is kind of a circular courtyard, I guess, of pillars that surrounds a raised, what looks like a marble platform that is maybe about eight feet by eight feet across in the center of it, uh, with plenty of room around it. It seems like this is one of the main like forecourts for where trials happen. And at the far end, in between two of the pillars, you have Brastatus, who seems to be talking the ear off of a very stoic and grumpy-looking Ariston. Uh, Ron, how are you and uh, Ariston doing? Uh, I think that speaks well, volumes. Do you want to hang back while the rest of us go up, or do you reckon you'll be all right? I'll behave myself if he does. Could you just behave yourself either way? We are talking about other people's lives. Fine. All right, might as well head over. Okay. You get over and um, they both clock you. Bar- Brass- Brassus just is first like, ah, hello, chaps and lady. Uh, it's good to, good to see you all safe and well. Oh, bloody hell, is that... That's what. Oh, oh that's surprising. Uh, I take it things went well then. We were successful in finding it. I, I can see you—you you killed the bugger. I can see. Uh, that's well. It wasn't my first option, but whatever. Yeah, it didn't leave us much choice. I'm afraid. Well, no, no. Needs must. Needs must. Of course. Uh, right. Well, I've had words and. I have I, not many people in Sparta at the moment. Uh, they mostly abroad, but I did find Odariston here to uh, verify everything. <laughs> so I it kind of like elbows him in the arm, and Ariston's just. Mm. <laughs> it's so yes. Uh, right, so let's have a look at it. You say this is the thing that uh that was impersonating the one of our people, yes, and the, the, the whole reason you're on trial, yes. Yeah, the total of people it's impersonated appears to be a Spartan military persona that doesn't exist. Um, what was the name on that one? Uh, Legionis. Legionis, who falsified documents. Uh, it's also impersonated um, myself uh, and three other members of uh, of uh, Poseidon in order to carry out assassinations both here and in Thebes. 
Oh, right. Oh, that's, that's a very busy boy. Uh, well, can I, may I have, have a look at it? Uh, Go ahead. Right. He kind of he stumbles over and he kneels down, kind of just has a glance over at it, and then pulls out from his boot like a short bronze dagger. And just right, uh, yes, uh, and just drives his hand and the dagger it right into its rib cage and just pulls down, and opens this huge gash, breaks straight through the ribs and the abdomen. It goes yeah, right, and then just sticks the bronze dagger kind of in a crack between two stones in the courtyard, so digs it in there, and just rolls up his sleeves and starts digging around in there and starting pulling bits out. I'm just watching. I'm just watching, fascinated now. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it is a little bit gross but it's especially for when it, the rest of the time you've seen him this is very clini clinical it's not like he's digging around like some sort of ghoul or anything he's like clinically looking through it like checking its physiology he seems to count some things on like like literally kind of counting something on the intestines but, all right it's quite an old one uh Okay. Uh, yes, definitely a shape changer. I can see that. I can see the, the that right there. It's, it's it's got the it's got the glands for it. You see, it's kind of it's close to an adrenal gland, except instead of releasing any sort of like adrenaline, it it releases things that change the proteins in the body and to quickly kind of change into something else. And that's how the appearance goes. It, why when it dies these things break down and you end up with a bloody awful mess you see but yes i can I think that's definitely a shape changer you're, you're right there uh i don't know can't really tell much else about it you did leave it in a bit of a mess but uh but yeah you seem to be true uh ariston old chubby you seem you happy with my uh report <laughs> just not just he's just been kind of Listening, but he's been staring at Runt the whole time, just kind of. Mm -hmm. I nod back. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Well, uh, I like I say, you've we have no evidence besides Legionus's report, and it's you say Leg this is Legionus, and he's no longer around. And since you have proved that said fellow is not a citizen that you have murdered, and is quite clearly a. Uh, some sort of beast, then that's all well and good. There's no murder stuff there. So, yes, I I, I see this case cleared. Your your friends will be uh, released upon arrival, I suppose. Jolly good. Well, thank you for your assistance, brother. No, no, thank you. It's 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 been it's I've enjoyed the company. It's been quite nice. Uh. uh Mind if I ask one question? Brothers? Yes, yes, of course. He starts just wiping his hand on like a rag or something, just wiping off all the blood and gore. You said it was old. How could you tell? Uh, you can tell this. These things. Uh, the older they get, they grow on the inside, but not so much the outside. So if you count how long the intestines are, that keeps that keeps growing throughout its life. You can sort of tell. Uh, so it's like counting the rings on a tree, almost. Oh yes, uh, I suppose it is. Yes. I take it you've come across these things before, then. God, uh, there's not many things I haven't come across in my time. To be fair, I'm... do you know of any way to identify these things when they're in another form? That's the trick. Uh, the younger ones, perhaps they they don't tend to be as uh, exact or Subtle. precise of a copy. You can notice small differences, maybe like. The ears are too long, the nose is too bulbous, they don't pay attention to the small things, I suppose. The older ones, though, they, they tend to get the hang of it, and they're bloody tough. Uh, the best thing you could probably do is put them under like intense stress, so either auditory or physical harm or something, because they do have to concentrate on these things actively. It's not a change, and then they're that until they decide something else. Like you can see, they have to keep that... Form. So if you can find some way for them to not be able to divert the concentration and the resources to that, they will start to revert back. <laughs> Do you know if these um, these things have like any form of telepathy? Because this one gave me like, a really stinking headache. Oh, yeah, oh yes. Again, drinking. it's 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 formed in adolescence, actually. It's, it's quite fascinating, but they do have a, a mild form of telepathy. They can't they can't project, you see, but they can read the surface thoughts of 
those around them without quite discreetly as well. Um, the, sometimes they must, they, when they push deeper or if they've been probing for a while, they, you'd start to feel it. But yes, that's, that's one of the ways that they duplicate their prey quite so effectively is that they also read the thoughts and then can assimilate that personality. And then, is there a way to uh, protect against that reading of like surface thoughts that you know of? Not, not that I know of. I'm sure there's some magic or doohickey that can stop mind probing, but uh, generally I just kill the bastards before before that happens. Yes, they, you know don't, don't get talking like to that. them, because they tend to they get talking to you and then they kind of lead the conversation so the thoughts that they want are in the surface of your mind, you see. They're very they're smart bastards. Do they have to oh. have seen whoever it is they're impersonating before they can do it? No, no, not at all. Uh, like I say, they're mind readers, so if you have a picture of the person in your mind, they will become that, if, if it's your version. Um, maybe it might not be the same. If you don't remember them the, as they are now, it'll be as you remember them, I suppose. Fair enough. Right. Do you know when this uh, this this caravan is actually going to be arriving? The uh, the prisoners. Well, yes. Uh, like I say, I have done some digging, and it seems they will be here in about twenty four hours. So, I guess take the day. Uh, you can keep this if you want, or we can dispose of it for you. I don't know what you should have for it. Uh, Do you know anyone would like to buy it? Like, is is a curiosity? Maybe somebody would be willing to pay for it. Not in Sparta, I shouldn't think. Maybe... I know this one's in a bit of a mess, so most things that could be used for alchemical reasons seem to have been uh, damaged, I guess, but so not, not I really. think the best thing to do really would be to give it some kind of burial, just for, just for the sake of closure. Well, we can do that. We, we can sort that out unless you wanted to. Um, but I'm all for I, burning it and scattering the ashes, to be honest. I, I quite I, like the idea of burning it. Burning it would be good. <laughs> okay, well we can we can stick it on a a, a, a pyre and a, with, when we burn the next lot, uh, or you can go do that outside the walls yourself. It's up to you. It's your kill. Uh, brother, it's either done right. I don't know what choice that is. I'm, I'm sure it. you can handle it. Oh, I really want to burn it. Let me burn it. <laughs> Fine. As long as it's gone, I don't care. Okay. Well, you keep it. Uh, be again. Probably be quick about it. Even in Sparta, seeing something like this dead and dragged along the city isn't is a spectacle. Do you, yes. Is there, is there a place where we can do it in private, where it won't attract too much attention, or not in Sparta? Uh, obviously, you can't no, be burning I'm bodies. Outside. Ah, yes, there's, there's plen probably plenty of places. Quite uh, maybe a bit further out than usual, since the. Uh, since the uh, fighting is is around, uh, so it's busier than usual. Saying that, we have fights on a bi-monthly basis. Man, I love this city. Oh. So yeah, so just okay, out, head out the city, I suppose. Keep walking until. Well, while, while they're dealing with that, uh, do you know anywhere that's reasonably friendly for out of towners for drinking a day away? Well, most places, like, especially during this season, it's a tourist city. You know, it's a, the Colosseum, the fighting, it's a tourist attraction. We have. Ah, but you must know some places that are a little better than others. Uh, there's, there's a few places, but if I tend to uh, peruse the more military haunts, which you may not, you may not find yourself, but there is, there is quite, there is a, uh, some bathhouses that I tend to. Uh, oh, yes. Where, where would pose. they be? That they're, are good. Yes, they're, they're they're further away from I'm nowhere near the justice market. They're in they're in the upper quarter, you see, in the uh, again more tourist region. If you if you if you go to the uh, the, the the frenzied urn and tell them Barristus sent you, they uh they they'll look after you. The frenzied urn. The frenzied urn and. Well, Rod, you wanted to play with fire and burn a body, so while you do that, I think I'm going to go and relax. Um, I'm going to come with you, dear, <laughs> if that's okay. I'm talking to Runt. Yes, yes, Bo means misery loves company. 
I Kai, are you going you to mean? be enjoying yourself, or uh, are you going to be watching the... Oh, I'm going to make this fireworks. I think I need to see that go. I need to make certain that it's definitely gone and that it, that it can't come back. I, I'm going to go with Mercy and run. Not that I wouldn't appreciate your company, Gavriel, but I need to I need to see this done. Right, well, uh, have fun, whatever you do. Uh, take the day. I suppose come back here in about uh, 24 hours and they should be here waiting for you. Jolly good. Right, Jolly thank you again. Absolute, thank you, and, uh, anytime. Thank you, Ariston, for your uh, invaluable help. <laughs> that's it right and then off we head I guess <laughs> okay uh, so yeah you can go and uh, Gabriel are you going to head over to the Frenzy Dern on your own or are you going to join the rest of them I might as well join the rest of them alright you guys go and yeah it's for brevity's sake you head out of the city again you get some weird looks but you, it's fine you're used to it by now. You head out of the city. You have to walk quite a way. It takes you a good 45 minutes to find to get past all the tents and to find somewhere private that isn't also going to like set fire to the rest of it. Because there's a lot of... It's towards the end of kind of autumn period, so it's not as dry as usual, but there's a lot of dry, arid land with grass that would catch. So, But you do manage to find a place uh, and collect enough... like bits of kindling and wood to start a decent fire. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody want to uh, say anything whilst they were doing it? or? Did you... uh, the only thing I'd want to do is, uh, once the pyre is built and everything else is set up and is set alight, I will I will do the best, appro- uh, best appropriate ritual I can come up with or impromptu to at least offer the stole to the underworld. Okay, uh, make a religion check for me. Certainly. Religion. Uh, 18. 18. Okay, you, yeah, you do the right, you light some incense, uh, and you have some frankincense and things, and you waft it over the fire as you do so, and you chant. Uh, from what you know of the underworld, you imagine, especially because this thing was also maybe not evil, but a killer or an attempted killer, that it will probably, being a monstrous as well, end up in Tartarus. So you do the appropriate rites for that. There are a lot more vocal and kind of primal kind of chants. And at the end of it, you cut your hand and offer little blood to the pyre again just no damage but it's just as per what you were taught by your temple and yeah the thing sure. burns it releases kind of a it releases a smell and it smells it smells not so much of like rotten meat you get the burnt flesh smell but you also get kind of like a musty old kind of smell and like brine like sea brine as well as the like it starts to burn down to more the fleshy inner organs you get like the smell of sea brine and salt air and like rotting seaweed kind of smell that you get on some like not so maintained beaches on a hot day (laughs) yeah fair enough (laughs) yeah and you guys then head back into sparta Right. Basically, because you, I don't think you've had any yet either, you guys have 24 hours of downtime in Sparta. Whoa. Please let us have a long rest. Yeah, you can <laughs> definitely go do that if you want. Uh, what time is it? Well, we've got a whole day first. Come on. Yeah, it's, You can go to sleep if you like. Yeah, you kind of went through... It's still, like, coming up to noon after... I'd say maybe half twelve, one o'clock after you've done this, because you kind of woke up early after staying with thing and then tracked it down. And yeah, so you're probably around 
half 12, one o'clock. But you could take a siesta if you really wanted to. Nope. Um, I'm going to see if I can leverage my, uh, my newfound title of Arena Champions, get some free drinks. Okay, make me a general charisma check. And basically, I'm going to ask everybody what they want to do for this day, and we might roleplay it out, or we might just roll, depending on what you guys want to do. Uh, if you're not sure what there is available, just let me know, and we can make some checks, and I can give you some suggestions. But yeah, this is your first opportunity of some actual downtime. So yeah, so run, make me a charisma check, tell me, I'll ask you all what you want to do, and then I'll tell you results afterwards, just for a nice flow. Uh, Mercy, is there anything you would like to do with the downtime? Yes, please. I very much would like to utilize the bathhouse to change my dressings. I would very much like to be accompanied by Kaya if she is willing. Okay. She's willing. Um, okay, you get to the bathhouse and I will come back to that. Kaya, you've got a whole day, so it doesn't just have to be bathhouse. Is there anything else you want to do while you're, you've got some chill time? Uh, primarily sort of that was the main thing that I was actually wanting to be doing, like head to the bathhouse and just mm -hmm. generally relax and sort of like try and make myself feel a little bit better. Have a spa day almost, yeah. Pretty much. Okay, and I didn't ask Mercy because I know the answer, but are you ha going to the bathhouse or are you going to the bathhouse? <laughs> <laughs> you want a knocking chop or not? Yeah, it's Sparta. Oh, no, it's no, Sparta. Well, no. I did, like I say, I didn't ask Mercy because I knew what her answer would be. Kaya, however, no. is uh, Aphrodite Bard, so oh. I will ask. Ah, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Hell to the... Nah, no. <laughs> it's Sparta. Every bathhouse has extra services. Oh, no, no, I don't want the happy ending version, no, I think. Didn't think so. Kaya? Depending as to how things go, probably not. Okay. She's had somewhat of an emotional roller coaster. Okay, it's, that's fair enough. Yeah. Okay, uh, Gabriel. Uh, so I was going to go to a regular bathhouse without any fancy trim. There isn't, um, like I said, you look around, there isn't any regular bathhouses, but there are bathhouses that, like I say, you don't have to partake in that. You can still go and just have a time in the bathhouse. There's just well, those services available. Um, and then also, I'm going to spend a bit of time going around the market um, and try to get a few kind of creature comforts and snacks and well, maybe some clean clothes and things uh, so that when the other three turn up, they've got something uh, immediate available to okay. them. So nothing to <laughs> be just like fresh clothes, rations, things like yeah, that. Yeah, fresh clothes, some nice food perfume or something just things to make them feel a bit more human slash elf slash whatever else yeah <laughs> i will i will um i'll just quickly add that once we've been to the bathhouse i will be looking to stock up on um linens and more herbs for my treatment okay in which case both of you make me investigation checks yeah well okay. you can find these And we'll go back around again. So, yeah, Runt, what was your charisma check? Uh, I rolled a 17, which was unmodified because I have 10 charisma. Fair. <laughs> 17, still a decent roll. You don't get, like, you don't get a complete free ride, but you do get, like, a lot of free drinks. So I'd say if you're spending the whole day drinking, which I have no reason to believe you wouldn't be with who you are, it only costs you three silver. I like it. That is a cheap night out. Mm. Like I said, you do get people, because you you go to the more rough and tumble kind of, not frat, but like beefier bars where there's maybe some small knuckle boxing going on or some smaller fights, things like that. P places where people would recognize you. And yeah, they tend to like buy drinks for the latest champion of the Coliseum and things like that. Oh, can I join one of these first fights? <laughs> yeah, like I said, you can join in some of those. You win most of them, uh, as most people are drunk as hell. The ones you don't win, you, you don't, like, take a massive beating. You're just, by the end of it, you're too drunk to swing straight as well, and they kind of end in a flop of 
you just can't just stopping both laughing at each other and then continuing to drink. Nice. So yeah, you're you're basically having a massive session. Uh, so also, if you want to make me a con save, <laughs> this will be after you guys reconvene. Actually, yeah. So don't bother with that yet. Mercy. Actually, no. Make me a con save now, and there'll be another one later for other stuff. Mercy. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, uh, it takes you... You don't find anything... You don't find the more niche stuff. So things like frankincense and those kind of... Oh, I don't need those kind of herbs. I need actual... Oh, like medicinal. My... Yeah, Okay. because I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure I'll be running low soon. Okay, yeah, you managed to find the linens and stuff. That's easy enough to find. Uh, the medicinal herbs, you you find some, but you don't find many. Okay. It's it's weird. Like you'd think you'd find more, but Sparta, for the most part, seems to be rub some dirt in it. It'll get better, kind of place. But you do yeah. find alchemist shops that have some ingredients they haven't used. Where it is also available to buy potions if you wanted to kind of ask about them. Um, that'll be for later, as and when. Uh, I, I'm not going to ad hoc buy on the fly. I'll see what everybody thinks about no it. And I'll make a mental. No I'll make a mental note of where they are, and then we can just go back there as a group and go. What does everybody want? Yeah. So yeah, see you will. Happens. You at least know where to find. Maybe the one, like at, w at least decent. one half decent alchemists. Thank you. That'll do for now. Yeah. Kaya. Oh, how, oh yeah. How much is that going to send me back? By the way, sorry. Uh, it'll only two silver. Like I say, it's just linens and scraps. Cool. Yeah, Mercy and Kaya, while you're having your spa day, did you want to talk about anything in particular? Well, yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I know. Um, I kind of need assistance with something, and obviously, I'm not asking either of them to mop it. To, well, <laughs> to help, they don't to help exactly. Them. They're not exactly subtle at the best of times, and I'm guessing it requires... A lighter touch, let's put it that way. Yeah, I can help. Thank you so much. Um, I kind of had a bit of difficulty the last time I had to do it, doing it alone, and it kind of feels a little bit... <sighs> so, yeah, um, an, extra pair of hands, <clears throat> an extra pair of hands would be most appreciated. Um, so, one, yeah, so once we get into a... We'll, we'll try and get as private a room as possible, where we can, like... Either have a separate bath each or just one giant one we can just uh, Yeah, they um, they um they have the rooms available for reasons. They kinda cool. give you both like a oh really? Okay. Kind of glance uh, no, as you uh, do uh, that. Yeah, they don't no, say I'm just anything. gonna uh, I'm just going to glare at them until they start making that face. Okay. They just I'm just gonna wink. Okay. They just they open one of the curtains and just let you through into one of the rooms. You go in Don't and you... <laughs> There is like, Kaya, stop it. <laughs> there's like there's like silk drapings down on the walls. There's soft candle lighting. You can smell some sort of like perfumed oils. There is like a cot, like a fairly decent cot, uh, in at the middle back of the room as well. No, no chairs, just a bed. Yeah, it smells you... like we've fallen. In, uh, it feels like it feels like we've fallen into the drawer of a dowager duchess's potpourri drawer. Ah. It smells a bit like home. Oh well, that's that's definitely different. But yes, um, to, to, cut, to cut a long story short, um, I need your help applying some ointments to um, certain parts of my body that I can't quite reach myself. If that would be okay, and I'll um, I'll I'll have to show you. To that's basically... fine. I'm I'm guessing probably on the back. There's, there's probably more than you think. Um, so I will take off my armor and blah, 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 blah. And you'll basically see that once the armor is gone and you'll see that what I'm wearing is a, it's a cross between, a, there's like a toga of sorts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Of, what you'll see is like where there would normally be exposed flesh. There is literally just very well discovered linens. So I'm, I'm so literally, so literally from sort of like, I don't know, shins, all, all the way up to my neck. Right. And all down. My, so basically, literally everything, that, basically like, you know, a really well disguised sort of like toga 
of sorts. Um, okay, that's weird. Um, oh. Okay, weird noises. Um, yeah. is, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, I will... If you would help me just undo these and then as they, as they unwind, you'll basically... I am pretty much covered almost every every square inch of me has some sort of some form of scar on it. Then let's get started in getting you unbound. So just Okay, whilst you're looking at these and helping uh, Mercy kind of clean and put salts and herbs on these wounds, would you make a medicine check for me? Just so you can kind of look and maybe guess what the heck went on here. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, you yeah. you don't recognise all of them, but you can tell. Like you can see lots of different types of like scars. There's some slashes, some very what look to be have been very deep slashes that kind of have the telltale kind of pinpricks where but like in random places where it's obviously been at some point or other stitched together but badly maybe it looks like maybe someone who wasn't expert or even if it was maybe done by herself you don't know where it's had to be stitched together kind of ad hoc you can see like puncture wounds that are almost like dual puncture wounds you can see what look like bite marks you can see parts where it seems the f- flesh has either been ripped off or literally kind of flayed away you can see all manner of different kind of scars there mercy yes dear no just what happened i I'd, <laughs> I'd love to be able to tell you um i i, I don't actually know um as i well i may have briefly um, mentioned in passing, but I'm not sure if anyone actually bothered to actually listen or pay attention because, you know, men. Um, I've really only been conscious of my life year or so. Would I roughly know how old these scars look? On a 15, not Probably sure. Not. They older than obviously older than a year. Some of them, yeah. most of them look to be at least five years old. But okay. you you're not sure. Like medicine isn't necessarily your thing. Yeah, just you can tell they're old scars, but as to an actual kind of telling the difference to whether they're at the same time or different times, you're not sure. You know, it's just sort of like are they, do they all appear to be older than a year? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I don't really, well, I suppose I could start at the start of what I do know, if, if you're that bothered about hearing it. But, um, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, the, the first, well, my first initial memory is waking up in, in, a, in a very cold place, um, which turned out to be um, the temple where I've been at. Um, I was pretty much sway- swathed, pretty much as as I am now, except for the armor, of course. Um, of course. Um, of obviously, you know, a combination of confusion, panic, fear, um, pain um, were sort of like the prevalent emotions at the time. Um, I tried to fight the pe- I tried to fight the people that were trying to help me I tried to run out of the building but clearly got lost and I fell down numerous times because I couldn't figure out how to control my body I had no idea how long I'd been asleep for uh, so my body had no, <laughs> no, no initial memory of it. Um, it, it it took a lot of calming down apparently because uh, apparently I was drifting out of consciousness for long periods of time. Um, I'm if, not sure. I'm not sure if I ever. Dr- well, I can't determine whether I had dreams or nightmares or visions, but I know there were 
occasional voices coming from somewhere that I know were not from around me. Um, so, yeah, um, that was kind of different. Um, if uh, I were to wake in a position that you had, I think, I think the same thing would have happened to me and I would have panicked and I would have fought whoever was near me. Do they pain you a lot? I am never without pain. I, it take it takes a lot of self control. That you never fair. let on. There's no point. It it it's it's how, how can I how can I put it? it it's almost like an extra sense, an extra emotion. It, it it helps drive me. It helps motivate me of sorts. It it's it's not something I hide behind, but I but I use the pain as like a defensive weapon almost. You what probably, did I you probably noticed. Um Yes, but would that I had the same ability then I could hide my pain better. I think it's I think it's just something that I may have already I already knew how to do for for one reason or another because it seems to very naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but but basically, yeah. As as a, everything else, I basically fell into becoming a. Um, I don't want to say unwilling acolyte, but it became almost like a like a penance, a thank you, for giving them. Um, apparently, I had a bit of a, a knack for things, seemingly, as well. I have no idea how or why. But maybe I, something I, from before. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I can't. I can't say that. Not everything about my past I want to know. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I really want to know what these wounds, but a part, a part of me. Would like to know if it was something that I can hurt back. Maybe some mild form of retribution. Um, but it's one of those. It's one. It's, it's one of those things. Because at the end of the day, uh, something tried. Thing will try, kill me, and they fail. So in essence, one. There is beauty in that, you know. It uh, might not uh, it might not seem it, but there is beauty in that. Oh yeah. That um, you are still here despite everything that you suffered. But uh, yeah, like I said, there is a small part of me, well, maybe not so small, that would very much like to find whatever did this, and I would very much like to see them pay and take the trip that they wanted me to take. I'll stand with you when that happens. If I'm still here, I'll well, stand with you. Well, I would never expect anyone for me. Um, the, the, the sentiment is appreciated. I'm not, it, sure, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether the boys... It's more the case but, as to you can't necessarily always trust the boys to... Be boys? Yes. Well, you can almost guarantee that they're going to... Be boys, <laughs> but they don't well, necessarily well, understand them. sentiment. No, but uh, but the, let's put it this way: one way or another, I, I, well, I'm here. I'm alive. Yes. I will. I, one way or another, I will become by whatever whatever means is given to me. So, whether it's you know, and I and I look at. Benedict, Benedict, and I say, well, he's become a, a friend of sorts while I've had him. Um, he was only technically loaned to me while I, while I was on um, on my delivery mission to Thebes before all this batshit craziness started happening. Um, but he's, although he doesn't say a lot, he's very com he's, he's comforting in a strange way. 
he has a presence. Yeah, um, whether it's whether it's whether it's whether it's me drawing comfort from knowing the story of his origin, whether it be actually true or just a wonderful legend. There's just something about him that's that I don't know. It's it's it feels right to me. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. But um, but yeah, I, if I if I knew more about what happened to me, I would happily tell you. But um, no, that's well, that's um. Oh, and in case you haven't already figured out, no idea what my name. Mercy was just a name <laughs> given to me. People temple because I was able to. Well, through my pain, I was able to gauge your people. Either help with their own pains, or if, or if, if they were savable, was able to grant. Needed. It is an apt name. <laughs> I well, that's that's very sweet. Thank you. Um, that's not about me. <laughs> um, that, uh, I've not I've not shared that much in well ever. I think. Um. You are not obliged to tell me anything. Um, but, um, do, you, do you remember when we first met? I told you that I had had an oops. Yes, um, dear. Quite, yes, quite plainly, yes. Al Candle was my oops. Oh. Um, <clears throat> we were going to be married and oh dear unfortunately he died I left not long after I couldn't stay where there were too many good memories um, was it a natural death an accidental death or? someone took exception to what would have been our marriage and chose to end his life I don't know who did it. I want to know who did it. I'm I'm not surprised. Um, Do you have any idea? Other than whoever it was took exception to myself and and Aphrodite. How interesting. Well, frightening, but interesting. Yes. Um, but had you been, I mean, how long, had, how long had you been together? How? A while. He was my last patron. And we fell in love. Uh, it's not in the way like it is here, where obviously... Services are bought mm. and sold. Okay. He was a patron for my music. Oh, so he would like pay you for writing stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, to hear me play music, to write things for him. Um, oh, he so wasn't. Would... Okay. He wasn't the first of. Me he was the last in a long line of patrons that I'd had, but but he was certainly he special. was going to be the last patron that I had, but then something happened. Yes. Well, I admit that I am worried about going home. I where don't is know. home? Where is home? Home. Is Delphi. I was born in Nidus, uh, but home for me is Delphi. Yes, of course, that makes sense. Well, as you quite honourably pledged to be by my side, um, un until such time as I am required to be elsewhere, I will definitely stand by yours. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely stand behind you. And I'm quite tall. 
Um, I I appreciate the sentiment. I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't certainly wouldn't want to. Do it. Um, I'm 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 pretty sure that um, if there's any sort of like retribution to be had, I'm pretty sure Benedict. Um, he, he seemed to he seems to enjoy things like that just as much as me. <laughs> mm, well, well let, let's put it let's put it this way. Um, remember how we, we both. We all came through the, the Feywild sort of thing. Yes. Um, well, we encountered a real bitch. Um, oh, well, on top of on top of everything else, there is one other thing I want as well. Oh. Um, well, no. Well, we had to help some dumbass and. I feel like you two should have like mimosas by the side of the thing right now. Like. Yeah. Cucumbers yeah. on your eyes, or you're just having girl yeah. talk. It's great. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting our hair done. Uh, it's going to be perfect. Like, Nails like, done, everything. Like Stacey, she's been such a real bad. But yeah, no, we are. Oh, the farewell, Britain. It's so nice. And, and oh my God. My, my eye still hasn't stopped. There. That's. But, but, I'm, but I'm the only one of us that knows it. So that's why sort of you've been quite twitchy when it's been mentioned. Um, well, okay. well, let's well, let's put it this way. There's one particular, the actual bitch. Um, she tried to try to kill me and she failed. So she's, she's on my list as well. I'm 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 deciding whether to either set her and the forest on fire, or just. Full of bees. Okay. While you guys uh, continue to have this, because yeah. it's kind of just recap of what you've done. <laughs> you guys can. Ju- I'm just aware of like time and. Things. Yeah, that's fine. We'll so, just. Yeah. yeah. Keep with recounting and bitching, and I wish I was in for that conversation. Not going to lie. <laughs> Gabriel, uh, what did you get? If you can remember, on your investigation check. Well, I got eleven. Eleven. Uh, you don't find anything special. You don't find perfume, sadly. Uh, you right. do, you do find like fresh clothes and things. You find some decent food as well. Uh, lots of like the Greek equivalent of pub grub, I guess, like meats and uh, drumstick and just everything that's easy to eat, like goat. No things, you know, just lots of easy food that <laughs> is full of protein and things like that, but. It is quite nice tasting because on the road you tend to eat more like grains and things like that because of, you know, rashing it and keeping it preserved. So it will be nice. You do manage to get some dried meats as well. Uh, again, just about two silver for that. Cool. But yeah, you don't, sadly, you don't mind to manage to find anything extra on an 11. <laughs> okay. Runt, what did you get on your con check? Con save. Uh on the con save, I got a modified. A modified what, sorry? Uh, 20. Okay. So, so 16 plus 4. Okay, so you are not intoxicated <laughs> as the state. You are still pretty... No! You've... I want to be drunk. Well, you've, still be got, drunk. you've still got a very good buzz on. Like, you're still getting there, but you don't have the ill effects that come with the actual status in-game. So how you roleplay, how... Uh, Sloshed you are is fine, but because you can handle it, being a big Spartan Minotaur, you don't have the negative effects that in-game you would have if you're intoxicated, okay? You know what, I will assess with that. Okay. If there is nothing else you guys want to do, we will skip to the evening where you all, I take it you meet up somewhere and maybe try and find somewhere to bed down for the night? I really hope so, otherwise you're running through a different campaign. If, I, if, if that's what happens, <laughs> that's what happens. Okay, so you guys reconvene. What is the plan for the evening? Don't try and catch up with Ron. Oh, do. <laughs> well, I, well even, if I, even if I wanted to, I probably wouldn't. Because that's just... Yeah. Uh, have, you ever, have, you ever seen a, have you ever seen a diseased liver? No, don't. Well, to be fair, three out of the four of you are at... 
the frenzied urn and i can imagine at some point runt will manage to stumble his way there so if you guys want to split another point that's fine but just in case you did want to do something for the night we'll say that runt managed to stagger and stomp his way to the frenzied urn uh just around dusk happy hour i like it don't think we can drink in the bathhouse no, you can do many other things yeah, in the house. Oh, you yeah, can, you can drink too. Like they've been offering wine and things like that while you've been there, and they've been offering other things. Drinking is the least of the problem. Yeah. Excellent. Drinking in the bathhouse sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, so well, if the four of you are in, like chilling in a single room, at least maybe not sharing the bath, but big room. Uh, well, communal room, not well, uh, well. communal room. Uh, well, it. As long as my bandages are changed, I will get once I'll get dried and changed, and I'll just be lounging somewhere. Yeah, no worries. So, what is the plan for the evening? Because you don't have any <sighs> to stay, although you are quite relaxed or sloshed. Well, no, I don't know what you mean. Well, well, well the no, options are well, we can. Come. Well, no, I was going to say the options are we can. See if there's any. Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, any route? Well, would, do you, would these places have like private? No, maybe not. No, I but I've, I've never been to able that. to point you in the direction of somewhere that you could stay. Mm. You might be able to get a free room if you take a specific massage. No, I'm pretty sure that's just done by the hour. I don't think that would. No, um, I think that's more money than we could afford right now. I'm not. Mm. Um, right. Well, the, the to... well, the, well, the alternative, the alternative <coughs> would be to maybe go back to Brasidus, see if he's willing to. I don't know. Well, well what he, he seemed to, well, he seemed to certainly like one of us. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's an option. We could try using my name. I mean, I've been getting just. Well, so you know, might, someone will give me a room. I'm then, sure they'd give you a bit more than a room if given the option. I'm too drunk to know how to take that. <laughs> okay. So you want to say Kaya to Brastidus' house for nebulous he reasons. Wasn't, he wasn't interested in me. Who's in yeah, for all you cards, I knew. Oh no! Are you, are you literally that oblivious? Are you literally that oblivious? I have had a fairly stressful day. You've been in a bathhouse. You're, you're preaching to the fucking choir. <laughs> it was it was stressful before the bathhouse. So I've, I've had a bit of a swim now. <laughs> uh, I've been quite relaxing. I got to hit some shit. I got under, to drink. Under the sea. Could go see Brassidus. That can't possibly go wrong for me. Okay. Oh, so are you heading to Brastus's abode? Yeah, yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, Wait, hang on, Kaya. Hmm. Yes. I'm, hang on, I try to remember if we found if we all actually found out about the poetry or not. Yes, we did because Mercy mentioned it. Kaya, could you help me write a poem for Brastus? <sighs> nothing, um... nothing goes down better than good old fashioned poetry. Uh, and sure then I he'll be going down. Something. Yeah, there it is. Knew it was coming. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm gonna hide. What sort of um poetry do you want? Uh Mercy, what was that what was that poem you found like? What? What was that poem you found like? What kind of style was it? I didn't find a poem, dear. Oh dead. It was quite nice and ended up with talking about breasts. <laughs> breasts? Oh, yeah. was, it raw, was it rowdy? It, it was a little lewd. Excellent. Lewd poetry it is. Lewd okay. poetry it is. <laughs> okay, as you all, some with more gusto than others, head towards Brastus's residence... Kaya and Gabriel kind of trailing at the back to kind of talk over verses and no. <sighs> Are you literally gonna if you're literally gonna write it down, I will throw guidance so you can make it really good. <laughs> okay. It's like just talking, yes. it's like, okay. Something something 
something rock like the site no um <laughs> that so, won't work so as you got yeah you're kind of talking over verses and stand and things like that you head on your way there and it's a little bit early but i think just if you guys did want to make this happen this is a good time to take a break before you get there so we are going to take yeah. a 10 minute break okay thanks for tuning in so far guys uh it's hope you're enjoying it for episode 10 i if for no other reason than to hear this poem, please tune in after the <laughs> ten minute break. If again, if you have a Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime and you have a free sub going, please think about throwing it our way. Other than that, we will see you in ten minutes time. Bye. And welcome back. Um, we're still waiting on Gabriel, and Runt seems to have. Forgotten his horn polish or something. Oh, here we are. He was, yeah, he was getting another beer. No worries. Horn, po- of course. horn polishing in public. What's, what's the world coming to? <laughs> he hasn't specified which horn. Well, I mean, have you seen the t- Twitch chat recently? I mean, ironclad horns seem to be the uh, the opinion. Of the- <laughs> um, it, inadvertent. Yeah, no, I'm not saying no, no. Yeah, don't go there. You're about, well, Gav's about to- Right. Although I am liking the idea of the Southern Pride Mercy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Mercy's third in 11 different herbs and spices. When you're being rubbed what? up with herbs, what? someone said, uh, <laughs> made a comment about you. I will find where you live for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, so like, the one guy we can't really start without hi there i'm definitely still here <laughs> well, it's whether, yeah that. but it's whether you're all there that's oh, we've got the guns out I, I wasn't all here to start with don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> right last we left off you guys after having a day off while you were waiting for gabriel's allies to arrive were about to head to Brastus's place because you need a place to sleep and Gabriel and Kaya were preparing some entertainment for the evening. Yeah, you guys make your way and you find your way to Brastus's door, which is open and you can hear like soft tune humming from the inside. The ancient Greeks knock. Uh, he's not going to have a doorbell, I appreciate, but... <laughs> Oh, I'm well. sort of stride into his well, house. Well, then Nana should I, always I match the deal. I'd just walk in. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> when she... Oh, hello, dear fellow. <laughs> just just try nipping, nipping in behind one. <laughs> well, it's good to see you all. And, uh, and what, what can I do for you? Just wanted to show our uh, appreciation of everything that you've done for us. And uh, of gratitude, of, of my personal gratitude. Oh, <laughs> did you now? <laughs> yes. Well, I was just about to open a third bottle, so... Um, as, um, oh, we started early, we see, I see. As, I, I don't know what time it is right now, but uh, did you... You brought your no. friends along, I see. Uh, interesting. Uh, didn't take you for one of those. Um, but, oh, hey, no, no, no. Oh, simply no, no, to help well. with a uh, uh, a production of, of performance in order to show our gratitude and uh, perhaps I can show my personal gratitude in another way oh e- exotic <laughs> go on uh, right well uh, oh, please start on the line <laughs> I, I shall I shall I shall take a, I shall just share lounge and yeah. Let's have some Corinthian courage <laughs> and he, yeah he just sits Amused but expectant, uh, with a a glass of wine. Just, well, glass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mercy, if you'd uh, like to do your. Uh... Yes, I will make the the grandest sort of like you know. I don't know. Interpret. In, call it. We'll call it interpretive dance. But I'll be like, tw- sort of like twirling around Gavril, and then at the last second. <laughs> Give him some guidance. Okay. So, yeah, you've a default to whatever happens here. Okay. Um, I'm going to sort of like go up behind, sort of like, you've got this, rub the shoulders, you've really got this. 
and give you a bardic inspiration. Yep. Okay, so you have D6 that you can add as well. I like how this is the thing where you're like, come on, come on. <laughs> like so, Some things are important. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, okay, so as I, as I start the oration, I'm going to uh, begin the, what do you call it? Uh, gust of Wind uh, spell. Uh, oh, as well, so that there is a, a light breeze creating some uh, some sense of dramatic uh, dramatic inspiration yeah, and wafting some clothes in a suitable manner. Oh, just wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I'm going to. I'm going to also quickly throw um, try and do a muted light spell on his armor to try and make it look really strong. <laughs> okay, so there is wind flowing. There is like. An almost ethereal light coming behind Gabriel. So, yeah, it's dead. Tres on beyond. So, yes, as the uh, Corinthians say. <coughs> Whose thighs are those? I think I know. Their owner is quite happy, though. Full of joy, like a vivid rainbow. I watch him laugh. I cry hello. He strides, his thighs do shake, and laugh until his belly ache. The only other sounds the break of distant waves in Poseidon's wake. The thigh so powerful, warm and deep, but he has promises to keep. After cake and lots of sleep, sweet dreams do come to him so cheap. He rises from his gentle bed with thoughts of Sparta in his head. He eats his meat with lots of bread, ready for the day ahead. Well... Jolly bloody good, jolly bloody. That 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 was magnificent. Uh, I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm I'm quite the one for poetry myself. Oh really? <laughs> yes, that, yes. I did the dab hand in it, but that that was that was rather good. Red, did you rather good? Well, thank you. You I, like I said, I enjoyed the company, and, and I was awfully uh, expecting something else, but that was that was wonderful. Ah. Uh, no, absolutely. Nah. Well, you're welcome to stay further. Like you stayed once, you are, you know, you are my guests whilst you are here. So feel free to. Uh... Oh, how, how well, it's, it's kind of custom. I figured you'd be sleeping here anyway, but the, you know, you slept here <laughs> last night, and you know, Elysium custom. I was going to put you all up anyway, but um, I'm happy to have the show. So, but yes. <laughs> That was, that was jolly good. Maybe we could trade verses and such, which at some point, dear fellow. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of time for that. I'm absolutely uh, sure myself. Okay. I'll open some more bottles and uh, see what we can't do uh, about making this a night of it. And yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, as a side note, um, in ancient Greece and therefore Elysium, usually someone would like if you're staying somewhere and someone puts you up, they will look after you as guests and put you up for your entire stay and be gracious towards you. And it would be expected across anybody with any sort of money would be expected to be a good host to show off that money and to also because you're their guests. So you always had a place to stay with him. So you never really needed to do that. But I wasn't going to tell you that because I wanted to hear the poem. <laughs> you cunning bastard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of Elysium culture is if you're put up somewhere, then you are put up somewhere and you are the guest whilst you are in their company. Just something to note in further stays, if you meet someone, they will most likely, as long as you are gracious to them, they will do the same. But yeah. Excellent. Let's get drinking this good man's uh... Yeah, you guys party through the night. You trade verses. He tells you some, again, much of his poetry seems to be of the same ilk. None of it seems to be as elegant as the first part of the poem you found, but they all tend to start off well and then very, like, towards the middle or the end tend to, like, delve into smut and lewdness and some of it is, like, if Alma was still here, she'd have to cover her ears sorts of poems. <laughs> yeah. Uh just as a just as a random point, I I'll be faking drinking wine. I'll be trying to find ways of making tea. Okay, no worries. Um, just as a noted point, I'll be drinking hers. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> that, that's fine. Oh, that's I'll fine. Be, 
I'll be sort of like doing both and also sort of like trying to make notes on random bits and pieces of poetry that he comes out with. But, Not well, for I'm, plagiaristic purposes whatsoever. I'm sure. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> well, th- there's a few about like a soldier from Gloshimachus and things like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yet, yeah, as a note with the wine as well, because he drinks so often, he doesn't seem to have it pre-mixed. So he has like the the pure wine and then the water in like urns and casks that he kind of mix as per. So it's quite easy for you to just pour water and then maybe add some more edible herbs to make a tea. Um, whereas usually it's yeah. diluted like Greek wine and Lycian wine is usually like one part wine to three parts <coughs> um, water. And so it was drank. Again, if you're mixing it yourselves, I'm sure runt would probably change the ratio on that as well. Um, one to one, uh, wine and wine. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One cup of wine to three cups of wine. Yeah. With some wine flavour. Yeah, it is yeah, seen as quite yeah. barbaric to drink it pure, but you are a Spartan minotaur who is already sloshed, so... I am quite literally a barbarian. Exactly. So he does... Yeah, yeah Brastus, he doesn't really... He bats a bit of an eye, but it, more in a sense of, oh, I'm jolly... God. And he tries to kind of do the same as a... <laughs> And the guy, I, can, I give him a friendly pat on the shoulder and just go, "Don't, <laughs> you don't want this." No, you're surprised. He can neck it as well. He's <laughs> he can handle his drink well. Although he always seems to be this perpetual state of "I may pass out," he keeps that level throughout the night. Like you get a sense I, that there is more to this guy than you see, and that that I'm night really happy drink contest. Mm. Like we go shot for shot now. Like that's that's all that's going to happen. First one pass out. Oh, okay. If that's the case, then um, uh, we'll make this a thing. So, yeah, it starts it. off as a friendly drink, and then you, as you notice that he seems to be keeping up, you kind of, it becomes more of a one-on-one kind of contest. So, yeah. Uh, where are we? So, make me a, a constitution saving throw, please, and then tell me the result. Uh, that'll be a 23. Okay. And he rolled a... I remember maths 21. So, yeah, you beat him on that one. So, yeah, you take you both take down the first shot, and although you both take it just fine, but he kind of <clears throat> inhales a bit as it kind of stings the back of his throat, but he seems absolutely <coughs> fine. Yeah, these aren't shots, by the way. These are full, like cups of wine that you're drinking. There's no shot glasses in Elysium. <laughs> so yeah, make a... I feel like Run needs to invent them. Um, another, con, another con save? Another con save, yeah. That is a lot less good. That's uh, a 15. Okay, it's fine. He rolled a natural one. So he takes it back and he <laughs> he starts absolutely coughing and like spluttering. Okay, sorry about that. Went down the wrong pipe. <clears throat> it's, it's quite all right. Now, shall we keep... One uh, more? No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's still... Of course, of course. I just look at Mercy and go, Spartans. <laughs> um, I, I just look back completely deadpan and just go, idiot man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Hmm? Literally sipping my tea, sis. Now I'm looking at Runt because he's making a face. You're going to hate me. <laughs> Is it a natural 20? <laughs> it's fine because he also rolled a natural 20. Yay! <laughs> yep, rolled a natural one last time, natural 20 the next one. Oh, so, yeah, it's like, dice library. This time he's like, he brushes himself off and he shows face and he, um, he picks up an actual one of the... Uh, like vessels, the bigger containers that he was pouring the wine out of, and just start. Oh, we're going drinking. for crafts now, are we? And you do the same. You're like, well, I ain't going to be bested by a bloody human. And you pick it up as well, and you both down, and you get kind of looking at each other. And there's not even like a flicker in your expressions. You both down the entire like urn, like small urn of wine, and then uh, he lets out a belch as he finishes. Like, nice, nice. It's up to you. Do you one more, or do you want to call it a draw? Oh, let's go one more. Why not? Okay, I'm starting. I'm to... not even feeling it. Neither, neither am I. I could do this 
all night, although we may have to pause to stop the room from turning, because that's going to get distracting throughout the night. Yeah, why is it doing that? Is that an architecture? I, it does it from time to time. I haven't... It, it seems to have... It's just... I don't know what causes it, but I, I haven't been able to stop it yet. Maybe with your help. We'll, we'll have one more, and then we'll, then we'll try and maybe hold the pillars so it doesn't keep doing it. You know what? I think that's a good idea. Let's, uh, let's dedicate this to Dionysus. Well, why not? Wine. Why not? To the, the god of wine and ritual next. Chin chin! To wine, ritual, and women. <laughs> well, that went off the table. <laughs> um, that is going to be an 18. Okay. I roll, no word of a lie, he rolled another natural 20. Oh, damn! <laughs> so, uh, what happens is um, you both lift up, like, what's left. Like, because you finished the container, but you'd already poured, a, a, like, a cup beforehand. So all that's left for you is what's left in that cup. And you both stick it back, and you're both kind of there, like, it seems to be spinning faster. And then it looks like he might throw up and you think you might throw up. And he lets out an almighty belch right there. It's like, oh, sorry about that. And you're the kind of like, oh, it's absolutely... And then you smell it. And the whiff of the beer coming from up of the wine coming from the burp it's just acidic and it hits the back of your like large nostrils and you're just like nope and you just fall back passed out <laughs> and land on the <laughs> land on the stone <laughs> wow that was he can hold his wine how are you how are you how are you all I bloody love having impressed. you here I... <laughs> Really? Well, we appear to be out of wine, so I'm going to go to bed now. Good night, all of you. And he stands up, adjusts his, his toga, adjusts his military kind of adornments, <clears throat> turns around, takes one step, and then falls flat on his face. <laughs> Much like you found yeah. him the night before, in the doorway, and he starts snoring, as does Runt. <laughs> Damn it, run. So yeah, you, you, you deja vu. It appears you got <laughs> cock blocked by <laughs> cock blocked by the ball. Is what you're um, can I just double? Can I just check both of them to make sure they're not going to accidentally vomit and choke on themselves during the? Yeah, try and make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's fine. Like you make. You kind of, uh, you get <coughs> Bar uh, Brass. Why can I not say his name? I made it up. Brastidus. <laughs> oh, uh, Brastidus. Um, you get him to his cart and you get him there and you just kind of make sure he's in a recovery position so he doesn't swallow his own tongue. You do the same with Runt. It takes all three of you because Runt is a big boy and you, you can't find no, anything. No, like, you can't find a cot that's big enough for him, so you kind of just sit him in the corner of the room, kind of slumped up, so that if he was to throw up, it would just go over himself rather than <laughs> anything else. And then, yeah, unless there's anything else you guys want to do, you can bed down for the night. Is there anything suitable to show you front with? Make an investigation check. I'm also going to be looking to see if I can find anything, like little ribbons. Ooh. Make me an investigation check. 17. Okay. I'm uh, using my uh, inspiration. I rolled a one. Oh, are you using oh, your favour? I'm using my favour. To find ribbon. Daphrodite yes. would be... Would agree with that, I'm sure. Uh, 18 in total. <laughs> 18, okay. So, first of all, Kaya, uh, as yeah. you're like looking around, you're like, ribbons, 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 ribbons. Why would this guy have any ribbons? And you, you don't find ribbons, but you find, like, in what looks to be some sort of discarded clothes pile that's just probably won't be used again from the stains on them. They've got, some of them have, like, similar adornments, and, like, you can unthread them and get basically long strips of pretty, brightly coloured, mainly reds and, like, golds and things of fabric from these clothes. 
Well, essentially, yep, you works. think you think it's probably his party gear that he's worn, thrown up on, spilled wine on, possibly got blood and burns on, and then just thrown and to be discarded later. So you can turn him into that. Gabriel, as you're like hoisting and helping hoist uh, Brastus to his cot, you you're hit with kind of an in inspiration, not in-game inspiration, don't get excited, but you have an idea. And as you're taking it to bed and you're taking off his boots, you take the bronze knife from inside his boot with you as well. Okay. Uh, are you going to then try and shave the Minotaur? Don't mm. you dare. You're unconscious, shush. <laughs> <laughs> So what's a suitable way to shave Runt to let him know that I'm unhappy with his actions today? <laughs> um, give him a very unfortunate moustache or Van Dyke or... <laughs> oh, what, just, just shave the fur around his mouth but leave him with like a big floppy moustachey piece, like a big handlebar? <laughs> or, or you could give him a very obvious treasure trail. Oh, hmm. Oh, we can leave him with mutton chops. Yeah. Mutton. <laughs> yeah, so like, underneath Beef. his eyes, we'll like shave away the fur down here. Beef chops. Down the middle. Don't give me a goatee. Okay, make me a sleight of hand check. <laughs> can it be a pose? Like, even in my... You are unconscious, so... Unconscious people. If it's a, if it's a pose, it's an auto win. Oh, wow, hang on. If it's a pose, it's an auto win. Hand. You're not asleep, what? you're 20 non-natural. 20, okay, yeah, you carve a very, a very good, and it's, like, very neat as well. Like, if the adventuring doesn't work out, you could open up, a, like, a barber's shop and do some quite trim hair pieces. But yeah, having never shaved a Minotaur before, uh, unless, well, I haven't got that in your backstory anyway, it wasn't mentioned. Yeah, you do quite a decent mutton chops on the cow. And because of the 20 as well, he yeah, he's just snoring the whole time as you're doing this. And you do so and you finish and you uh, take the knife. Uh, are you keeping the knife or are you putting it back with... <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to put that back with the stuff. I'm not going yeah. to steal from them. Put it back with the stuff and yeah. Kaya, what, what was your plan with the ribbon? I'm actually going to adorn Runt's horns okay. with bows and various other things and basically just make them look unbelievably... Girly. Okay. Yep, that's that's uh, fine. I'm not going to make you make a slight hand check for that because one, he has passed <laughs> out and he's just been shaved and not woken up, <laughs> and it's not something that needs much skill. You can just tie them on and do it however you like. But yeah. yeah. Anything else before the rest of you go to bed? Would one of you maybe want to kick him in the crotch? Or <laughs> no, I think he's suffered enough. I don't want to. Don't go looking at me for that. I'm a complete douche. <laughs> Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, maybe a little bit. A banner to the dictus or something. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> hey, he's spiky. I don't know. I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else, then you all go to bed. Kaya and Gabriel definitely with a big smile on your faces. And yeah. I'm just going to just grab a pillow, find a dark corner, and then just go. Yeah, that's fair. And you wake up the next morning. Um. Runt, I'm gonna need yes. a I'm gonna need a couple of things from you. First cool. of all, I'm gonna need a con save at disadvantage. A disadvantage can yes. do. Uh, and then I'm going to need a perception check. Uh, so that's fifteen on the con save and perception check. What's my perception modifier? <laughs> The rolls you have to fucking that. make. Right. Uh, oh, okay. That's uh, <laughs> not great. That is a four on perception. It was nat one. Okay. Oh, nat one. Okay. <laughs> so on a 15, you are not still drunk and you are hungover, but it's not too bad. Like you just feel a bit fuzzy and hot and a bit sweaty. You've got the wine it sweats. It just adds my rage. Yeah, you've got the wine sweats basically, but you're not crippled and down on a natural one perception check you wake up and everything's fine just a hangover <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't wait for the first opportunity to find a mirror 
<laughs> oh, that happened the grass one. Okay. Uh, yeah, you all wake up around about the same time. Brastidus kind of gets up groggily, and he's he is very hungover. Uh, he parties hard, and he recovers even harder. Partly. Yeah. So he's like, all right, we should um. Uh, were you? Yes, probably. I don't know. Uh, shall we make our way there then? Your friend should be arriving anytime soon. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Okay, let's. After you. If, I don't think the room can fit the eight of you in here, so if you want to make your way, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to follow behind Run and just. just... Appreciate quietly the uh, the giggles from anyone in the street. Yeah, there are there are a, there are quite a few, like especially from like you spot because they're not all you know dead, but you do spot like for example in Civis, uh run, you see the big kind of tiger looking gladiator in like just a plain uh, kind of off white kind of simple toga. And he starts to make his way towards you, like wringing his fists so, with a big scar down his face where you kind of, yeah, and he's got like a burn mark and some of his fur's singed. And he starts to make his way towards you. And then once he's about, say, about six feet away from you, he looks and just goes, <laughs> and just walks away, just laughing. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what his problem was. Uh, I'll punch correct. him in the back of the head. I'll chase him down and punch him in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, oh no. Really? <laughs> no. Oh no. No, no. Okay. I'm no, hanging. No, no. Okay, I'm delicate, right? <laughs> and now somebody's mocking me. <laughs> okay, make uh, make an attack roll. <laughs> uh, that is a 19. 19, yeah, that hits. Uh, what's your strength modifier? Oh, that's, oh, shit, I didn't have my strength. Um, so that's 22. That's fine, it hits anyway. Oh, cool. Um, and what damage is it for an armed? It's, D6. What, it's what, no, it's it's one plus your strength modifier. That's what oh, I was asking. Cool. Uh, four, sorry. That's all right. So, yeah, he takes... Yeah, you cock him right in the back of the head and he turns around. <laughs> I bundle him into a big bear hug. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, he kind of just lets it happen. You can see his claws, like, retract as they were sharp before, and he just... <laughs> you, you fight well for a, for, a, for, for one of those types. Next time you're around, we'll do this properly. You have no idea how much I want to hear that. That was well, the best fights of my life, and uh, credit to you, I will happily match with you whenever you want. Absolutely, and uh, you know, maybe it'll have grown out by then. And uh, he kind of just walks off. <laughs> I shout after him, what will have grown out? He's just gone, make an insight check for me. <laughs> oh, that's not going to help. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's definitely not gonna help. <laughs> um, oh, actually, no, I have plus three. That's uh, 15. 15? Uh, yeah. You think at first you like, is he talking about his fur or is he kind of, and as you all kind of go, is he talking about his fur? You put your hand on your face and you, for the first time ever, actually, you can feel like skin. Skin. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I start passing my. My face. Yeah, you kind of you get the like, gist. Feel like everything. Yeah, you feel the ribbon. You get ribbons. The yeah, you the shaved face. You feel it all. I turn around and look very darkly at the other. Okay. Which of you bastards? Oh, bitches! <laughs> Sorry, I'm a. No, that masculine. Don't stuff. look at us. You're the one who got absolutely drunk and decided to get decorated yesterday. I definitely did not get decorated. I got plastered. There is. A you got plastered and then you got decorated. Yeah. Which one of you? Okay, are you trying to are you trying to, to convince him that he did this on purpose? 
Of course I am. Okay, make a deception check for me. Run, make an insight <laughs> check for me. Uh, that'll be. Ooh, I want to hear his first. <laughs> it was nineteen. It's deception. Ah, oh, seventeen. You call him shit. You shit. This is absolute runt shit. Ooh. I storm over to Gavril. Okay. And I I just grab him around the way, something in the air. Went, well, I guess I... Sorry, we lost sound and we just saw you <laughs> wanking off a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I guess I just... I, I guess I did cock plug you, didn't I, little fella? And just, like, pick him up around the waist and, like... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Give him a big hug again. Only Brunt is very loving when he's hungover. You'll be all right in a few days. <laughs> can I uh, just can I just be quickly um, making up a using what little water I've got left in my hip flask, making up a little like um, tonic to give to Brassen <laughs> to sober up a little bit with what few herbs I've got left. Yeah, that's that's fine. You can do that. It's got no actual like uh, because of the role you made. It's got no in-game healing purposes, but it worked for what you need it for. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you guys, like, Rassus is half laughing, half trying not to make his way down to the <coughs> underworld. <laughs> so, and you eventually you make your way to the Justice Market, and you can see what looks like a, like a caravan of something that has arrived in the distance. Well, that's prompt, at least. Okay. He wasn't wrong on the timing. It was a bloody wasn't. I know what I'm doing. Just, just stop shouting. Okay, and you make. Your <laughs> I'm way. sorry. What? I should. I uh, welcome. You're, you're very hospitable. Um, you make your way over. Um, as you get closer, you you don't recognise the people there with. Spartans. Mercy, you do recognize the dress and you do recognize one of the people with them. Okay. Uh, as Elpina. Who, for those that don't remember, is was the priestess <coughs> of Hecate. Oh! Yes, yeah, okay. I was thinking I know in that Sparta. Name. Yeah. Yeah. In um, yeah. Thebes. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, I'll, I'll pop over. Do uh, you pop it? Yeah, she looks up and she's like, "Oh, uh, mercy, was it?" If I. Yes, correct. Um, Elpina, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's uh, it's it's good to see you. Um, it's, it's weird how nice the roads to tend to intertwine like that. What? what I'm you... I, well. <laughs> I'm guessing roads and Hecate. Odd connection, so I'm not surprised. Well, quite <laughs> yes. Um, and what what are you doing in Sparta? May I ask? Is... Um, <laughs> I can't say through any any of my own choosing. Um, um, I'll sort of like just turn my like like um, the, the 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 short guy with the um, bald head and this and the fish fork. Um, we're basically helping him uh, save some of his friends. They, they were supposed to be coming here by caravan. They, they'd been wrongly, wrongly accused of treason, and we were doing our job, doing what we could to save their lives. Oh, okay. This so, fair enough. Yes, that's a good a reason as any, I suppose. I um, I I know. I think I know what caravan you're talking about. We kind of passed on the road, but they were ahead of us. I'm not sure. They may have been diverted. There has been some odd occurrences on the road. We we took a more southerly path than we would normally do. I think they may have gone a different way. But we when we, did you in, where, when did you intersect them or pass them or see them? Uh, it was quite early on as we left Thebes. We travelled together for a time, but uh, they appeared to be well. They're swifter than we are. They tend to want to get to where they're going and not care about anything else, whereas we stopped off at Lagina on the way. Um, so, they, yes, they were ahead of us, but 
I'm not sure. So, so, so you lost sight of them at Lagina? It was just before Lagina, yes. They, they didn't go to Lagina themselves. They headed straight over to Sparta. Oh. Well, that's not at all worrying. Um, I, I shouldn't worry. There was quite a sizable Spartan force with them. Maybe they just got waylaid on the road. Like I say, we diverted south to avoid the forest. Um, mm. As we've heard, mm. some things have been happening over there. Uh, what kind of things? There's, there's been reports of animals that would normally reside in the forest itself, kind of making their way out, and strange tales of, like, frenzied animals and howlings in the night and things like that. It could all, <laughs> it could all be I'm... hearsay and rumour, but we thought it'd be best to avoid it with the small number that we have. Um, sorry for pressing. Roughly, roughly where is this forest? Uh, it's, it's just, it's north. It's, it's in between, directly, it's in between Lagina and uh, Vul the Vulcan Mountains. It's just, it's on the other side of the river. Uh, and and that's and that's roughly the route that you think that caravan was taking. Well, the direct route is to go straight across and down across the low bri bigger bridge to Sparta. They may have taken another route. Like I say, we diverted south and took the lower bridge just to avoid meeting up with whatever might be there. Oh, that's not at all any great. Um. And uh, and you basically had no trouble getting. No, no. It like I say, it took longer than we would want it to. But no, we made we made. So decent so time. by right by right that caravan should have arrived well before. Well, I don't I don't know. It should have probably <coughs> been here maybe a day ago if it was going direct. But who knows? Well, well, according to our saw, I'll point to the drunk dude. Um, he, well, he said he should have been arriving. This morning, and yet you're here. Yes, it's sad. I'm so I'm sorry. I can't be of more help. I, no, 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 no. We have um, our own task no. here that we have come over for. And I'm not sure about. Oh, nothing too serious, I hope. Oh no, well, no, not really, not at all. It's a trade of services, I suppose. We we've come over to uh, <laughs> the darndest things to help build libraries. Actually, there seem there's been some sort of negotiation between Hecate and Ares, and Ares is, now he's not at war with Athens, so he wants libraries. Uh, and in return, uh, Ares has promised that he will send someone to help with our problem. So, How interesting. Um, well, um, uh, as, and, as and when we, f we have to leave, because we may have to leave based on this information, um, but if at any point I may be of any service to you, I, I don't know. But as a, seeing as you, seeing as you helped me back in, it would seem only fair that I at least reciprocate in some potential fashion, if if if, if I can. I don't I don't know if I can. So, oh, um, um, well, I'm, actually, as a cleric of Persephone, you may be able to help. There is a, but I can't go into too much detail here, but. You were around Thebes for when the undead problem happened. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, I know you're involved in that. Well, we seem to have similar issues in Lagina that we can normally handle, but have become more troubling of late. So we're dealing with... It's nothing that we're not holding back, but we we are having reinforcements. So if you... Um, wanted to aid um, with that, I'm sure. Because my temple's there as well, isn't it? Yours Correct. is in uh, Attica. No, it's some... Sorry, yeah. Uh, wrong city. Um, well, um, I will bear that in mind. I will... If I, if I can get at least a message back to my temple, then I might be able to send somebody straight away. But if I'm... If, if time allows me or whatever... I, I will see if I can get there myself. Absolutely. Um, I'd say there's there's no obligation, there's no favour, but if you did want to aid, I know we wouldn't say no to any aid that we could have. It, it, as, 
as a cleric of Persephone, it would be it would be remiss of me not to at least get this information back because obviously anything tampering with death, anything tampering with the business of the underworld is something that we have to address. Well, without saying too, it's not a problem we're a stranger to, but it's one that needs but, more attention yeah, at the moment. Like I say, I can't go into even, too much details. Many hands make light work. And exactly. It's, it's, and, um, it's, basically, it's basically our domain, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, beasts. She, kind of, she looks over at all of you. She's like, this? Hmm. It's odd. Uh, so if you were in need of aid and you would do this, then there seems to be a shroud on each of you. It's odd. Um, not quite sure what it is, but if if you were to come and f if before you leave, come and find me when we have unpacked, and I may be able to help you with. Where where will you be? So uh, we are we are staying in the in the in the religious um, quarter of the city. It's relatively small, but we normally have a place there where we can go by the shrine, if you're all familiar with it. I've we've not had a chance to really fully exp get get directions from someone reliable. Okay. Well, um, we have to unpack and get started. We will. <laughs> no, that's fine. But we should um, we I should will... be here for some time. Like I say, there's getting Spartans to know what to do with sure. the library should be a miracle in itself. But um, if you have time, come and find us, find me, and once I have things prepared, I could maybe help ease. Once, uh... Yes, if our business, well, once our business is included or di redirected, um, I will see what I can do to maybe get us all, please, pay you a visit. Okay. Before we go. Thank you. It's good to see you again. And, and you. And she goes back and starts like um, helping the rest of them unpack. Um, yeah, I will turn around and hurry back. Okay. Um, uh, Luke, can I throw up Divine Sense when she turns up? Because as I recall, she had a uh, an infernal, uh, not an infernal fiend um, nearby previously. Yeah, um, same. You sense the same presence, just around um, her. Okay, and uh, are the other people who turned up with her? You you don't sense much from them. You don't sense like the actual presence itself, but you do. With some of them, you do sense similar energies, but less so. And it's not a, like a, its own thing around them, but it kind of almost, almost like an aura. Okay. Okay. Um, right. So, um, if you're wondering why we're seeing that caravan and not ours, it's possible it's either been waylaid somewhere else or something's happened to it on another road apparently um, El Alpina's this caravan intersected them around Lagina in which case they diverted around a forest that was supposedly doing weird stuff having weird stuff happening and they may have taken another route maybe going around down by the Vulcan Mountains in the, in the um, but technically this the caravan we're waiting for still should have arrived so Maybe something else is. I I don't know. I'm just relaying information. No, well, that's uh, appreciated. Going on a caravan hunt then is is that what's going to happen? There's well, there's other things as well. Uh, there's um back close to my 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 city as well that I may have to try and at least get word to if we can't get there straight away if I still. Um, determined to find your colleagues, Gabriel. Um, but um, but there's so there's so we've got potential things to do. Uh, we still need to try and figure out where your friends are. If that caravan is still missing, we at least we now have a rough direction where they might have might be coming from as to why they're being. Doing. Um, but also, um, not to freak anybody out. Um, 
Alpina seemed to sense something peculiar about all of us. Not in a potentially bad way, but she seemed to sense something. Um, so she has Would offered... Would it have anything to do with these ribbons? Because like, they're freaking me out too. They, they look lovely, Runt. I think she's absolutely. probably talking more about the arcane and religious issues than um, the aesthetic uh, ones. Yeah. Um, but even so, she has offered, if we figure out what we're going to do, if we just have maybe half an hour before we go to pay her a visit, she will do what she can to give us what, what information about what she sees, if people are okay with it. Because, quite frankly, I'm, I'm okay with it. She helped me out back in Thebes, and I'm quite happy to... But yes, we need to think... Anyway. Um, her name is Elpina. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, cleric of... Uh, well, she is a... Is she, no, she, well, I don't know what she is. She's a priestess of... But she's um, affiliated to... Hecate. Oh. So, yes. Um... I, I ran into her and she helped me out. So, yes, so stuff and things. And we need to figure out if Brassidus knows anything about this weird diversion. And if he does, then we may have to go on a goose chase or fish chase. Caravan chase? Mm. It's Gavril, so it's a <sighs> okay, so you, um, mm. so as you look, you can see that Brassus has made his way to like the main building where you were before, where you saw Ariston, <clears throat> where the uh, kerfuffle first kicked off, and he's kind of made his way in there as you've been talking amongst yourselves. Maybe we should ask. Maybe we should mention it to him and see if he's aware. Yeah, they might know where they're at. My my big concern is that those those that are being brought here, I am very worried that when they arrive through clerical ineptitude, they may end up um, not receiving the pardon that we fought for. Well. Rasta just gave his word and we need to make it more official, though, I think. Maybe, I don't yeah. know. More official sounds good. Well, I'm assuming time is once again of the essence. Well, apparently not if they haven't even arrived yet. Okay. Are you guys making your way in there? Yeah, I'll go find Brassidus. Okay, as you make your way to the door, now you notice, because you all have terrible passive perceptions, just saying. Uh, I think the highest is 13. You yes, hear... Okay. You hear... 14? Four, okay. <laughs> you hear yelling, and you can hear pots breaking, and you runt, definitely. You recognise the voice of a very angry Ariston. Oh, yes. Let's come on. Round two. Let's do it. Okay. No, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. As you, I assume, follow the noise. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do that. And you, you get in and you can see Ariston. He is like, all his heckles are up and he is basically steaming at the nostrils. Uh, as you can see, he's just yelling. He's like, you incompetent bear! And he just throws a, a clay pot that hits the wall. And you can see cow- almost cowering there, trying to look smart, but really failing. It's a Spartan, what you assume is a Spartan warrior, except they're wearing nothing but the Spartan underdress. So no armor, just like the toga and the Spartan, the plain Spartan, where they haven't got their armor on, they don't have any weapons or anything, or a helmet, but they are wearing that uniform. So I'm sorry, we did what we... Don't you talk back to me, you incompetent slug! And Brastis is like, calm down, calm down. There's nothing we can do about it now. Let's get find out what happened before you kill the boy. It's like, I don't know what happened. He's like... Just... It's easy. Oh, can you just go... You still beating your privates, Ariston? 
Every night, boy. <laughs> oh, no wonder its forearms are so big. <laughs> Don't start with me right now. Braston says, you deal with these before I tear someone's head off. And he charges and just shoulder barges past you and just leaves the building. Pleasure as always. Take care. You hear more things breaking as he leaves. You know, wouldn't it be fun if he was involved in a freak yachting? You know, not not even really at sea, just walking down the street and then just mm, a yacht falls out of the sky. <laughs> Brass is just, just me. So, just, something. He uh he takes a second. He's like, oh, that really didn't help things. Um, oh, it's it's good, that coming in, Gabriel. I'm really sorry about this chap. Uh, I just uh, uh, you know what I'm. I may actually die. I know how Zeus felt when he birthed Athena right now. So, um, Pella, why don't you tell me what, tell them what you just told me? It's like, uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we, are you the, you the, you the other member with the, the people that were being carried here? The, they're on the way. Yeah. Those ones. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Well, they're, they're on, they're on the way. Uh, the 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 it's fine. They're on their way. They'll be here by nightfall. I was with. I ran on ahead. Uh, there's just been a slight delay um, as we were we we headed like more north to avoid. I don't know why we headed north. But the main bridge was apparently there was beasties and things like rabid and like horrible. I don't know. But we. Uh, we were mugged, basically. We were mugged uh, on the way there. A Spartan military convoy was mugged. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were ambushed on the way, and uh, we we lost a couple. Not 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 many. The, the your friends that you are fine. They actually helped out during the ruck. But yes, we were we were mugged, and they they took the caravan and the uh, the our our equipment, and so we've been walking for the past two days. You were mugged near the forest. What were you mugged by? Did you see anything? Yeah, they're just people, uh, as far as we could tell. Very, very skilled in ambushing. But yes, is he couple telling of the truth? Insight. Does it appear as if he's telling? The truth? Seventeen. Seventeen. He's pretty much yeah. telling the truth. Yeah. Um, he's. <laughs> had the lies scared out of him by Ariston and right now he's just trying not to make it any worse so yes but yeah I've been sent ahead to let you know they are on their way um, but there's been a slight delay as we don't have transport anymore and yes there's that fine um so, so you did everything you could. Still got a few hours then. Yes. Um, like I say, they Wait. were they were they were quick and effective. And so they were all all, all human or or what? I don't know. Human elves. I think there was a dwarf or two. Uh, there was a lot of them. They came out of the the trees. They seemed very skilled in what they did. Like I say, we might have been. As Spartan warriors go, we may seem incompetent, but we're still Spartan trained, so we're not used to those kinds of tactics, I suppose. We're more used to the open combat, you know, honourable fucking combat, not outright ambush like that. So they, they took us unawares. Um, we came out of it relatively unscathed, and the main thing that was left was our dignity. And, of course, all of our weapons and armour. Well, I'm pretty saying you don't have. have your dignity at the moment. No. Not at all. No. No, maybe we should let you leave before Ariston comes back. I uh, imagine he might take more than your dignity from you. Yes. Were you transporting anything else other than uh, his friends? Uh, just supplies, uh, weapons, armour, wine from Thebes. Nothing of much importance. Something to bolster their forces, I suppose, but yes. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Well, very well. Suppose we'll have to uh, 
kill a little bit more time in the uh, the cultured land of Sparta. Yes. Um, mm. I, I I apologize. Oh well, well to be to be fair, you're still alive. His friends are still alive. They're still going to. Uh, technically, it's still a win. So be, I'd say be grateful. Uh, we'll we'll see about that when Ariston's done. But oh oh fuck that miserable twat. <laughs> His eyes like go wide, and you just kind of excuse me, and he very hastily makes an exit. <laughs> Ken's not like paying attention anymore. He's trying to stroke the cat. <laughs> Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, let's 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 get out of here. We we're not going to get much more out of him. I assume yeah, we're um, going to occupy ourselves until they do arrive. Um, I want to just quickly just um, grab Brassidus a second. He's in the corner. He's kind of last night. It wasn't happening. He's leant against the desk that you that is now upright, which is good. And he's just like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this has never actually happened before. <laughs> Well, there's the first time for any things, I guess. Um, I was wondering if I might... I wouldn't say... Well, it depends on whether we would be a favour or just a pillar. Um, I, I, I need to get a, a message to um, Attica pretty pretty quickly. Um, how, would I be, how would I be able to expedite... Do you have like messenger services? Or? Yes, yes, we do. Um, mostly on foot. We don't have much of the spellcraft, but I think the least we can do is send a fast horse with a fast man and take that message for you. What 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 do you need sending? Um, I, I basically need a, a a message to the high priestess of the temple of Persephone. There, um, just letting them know that there is potentially a a matter of divine intervention requiring in Legina. Um, if, if you don't want to tell me what it's about, you can write it down. And although the messenger probably won't be able to read, I'm sure your high priest um, well, as well. Well, as long as they've got hands to actually hand over the message to the appropriate person, then then fine. Yes, I, I find um, actually that them not being able to read is more of a, a pro than a con when delivering clandestine messages so. well well yes well yes they can't um spy on stuff yeah. yes um if i was to quickly write a missive now would you be able to raise that for me yes of course i think it's the least we can do after everything that's happened um yes right um i will quickly scan the desk for any sort of like parchment yeah you, you there is some um not a lot and it's you find a piece well, of charcoal I'm... that's like broken into like three bits so you're gonna have to Write it like that, but you, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's suitable to at least get a competent enough message to, yeah, to my that's address. absolutely fine. He pockets that and says, "I'll I'll sort that out as soon as I finish vomiting, which I will do as soon as you are done here." Remember to drink that tonic I gave you. Mm-hmm. As soon as I can keep it down. <laughs> Right, well, like I say, you are more than welcome to keep yourself occupied. You can use my residence, if you like, in the meantime, for whatever you need. Again, we apologize for what has happened. This has literally never, ever happened before. Well, that's all right, it happens to everyone. Apparently so. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah. performance anxiety is clearly prevalent in all. Anyway, yes. um... Yes, it is. <clears throat> so, um, shall we pay a visit to Alpina before we make our minds up to where we'd like to go next? That seems reasonable. No, I, I think we have enough money to uh, been. Uh, well, we have. Much. Well, we have a small amount of money. Yeah. So, <laughs> might not get as far. No, but sometimes. It can get you far enough. It's true, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Mercy, you might not remember, but the shrine is where you almost got stabbed. 
Okay, so, yeah. right, sure. So yeah, so it's easy enough. I didn't want to say that at the time. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. So yeah. it's easy enough for you guys to find your way back there. Once you get there, they're still unpacking most things. Like they have haven't been there long, but they're coming in and out of the shrine itself with like boxes and pots and things like that. And Alpina, like after a while, she walks out to get head towards their supplies. Like, oh, oh, uh, it's good to see you. Thank you uh, for coming. Um, right. Uh, well, give me you. one moment. Uh, sure. She kind of goes around. She kind of goes back in and then starts shooing like acolytes out of the shrine. Like, I, I was expecting you uh, I, where I was quite cryptic and ominous. So I figured... You know, morbid curiosity, you'd be here sooner rather than later. Come come on in. Uh, most things are prepared. I go in first. Okay. I'll go in second. I'll no, go in I third. Gabriel? And Gabriel can wait out here. I just said we're all handed, I assume. Okay. Well, we'll as you all get in, there. Again, it's the same shrine you saw. The altar itself still has the same decorations at the back of the room, but around the room there are now also extra kind of adornments, more in theme of Hecate. Like there's more cre there's crescent moons, banners, and ornaments. There is, again, there's incense burning. Uh, there are crystals laid upon the altar that are reflecting the light from the candles upon the ceiling uh, in... Like in quite a fantastical and spectacular way, to be honest. It seems even though the candle only flickers, they seem to be making different shapes that you don't quite recognise, but you almost think like it's on the tip of your tongue almost of what they are changing before. And as soon as you think you've figured out what the what it's what it looks like, it changes to something else. So you all see that and she's like, Oh please, um, sit and you can see there's five cushions kind of laid out in almost a circle more of a pentagram i suppose on the floor because of course <laughs> do you need a sitting in any particular order or just anywhere not at all wherever you feel most comfortable i lie across all five even you get wouldn't be able to do that because they're too space far, but you get a few. Get your fat ass off that cushion. Something <laughs> sits down on top of uh, Monk's side. I'd start doing like sideways push ups just somewhere. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to make yourself a seat, you will get I'll sat keep, on. I'm going to kick his legs and take the one neck, take one neck <laughs> closest to Melvina. This is, this is a. I think I'm going to sit down civilly. This is a shrine and a temple, please. Okay. Uh, Run to behave. Once you're sat, she, uh, uh, no, I, I sit up properly. Okay. I'll sit down on a seat. She suddenly she reaches, goes towards the altar, and picks up uh, an incense holder with one that's still burning, puts it in the middle, and then she sits down on her cushion. She said, "I know this may seem odd, but when I first saw you, Mercy, there was definitely something hidden away." Uh, I saw it upon your face, upon your expression, and, and upon your being. There was something there, and I, upon returning to Lagina, I did speak to my superior about it, and I did hope to see you again so that maybe I could help. Oh, I thought you meant all of us. I do, uh, actually. Oh. Yes. I, I had only met you before, but upon seeing all of you, you all have similar things going on. I oh, that's okay. I thought I thought I'd misheard. No, I, don't, I don't know what it is, and I have limited ability to help, but maybe this will open the first gate, as it will, as fate or divine prominence or some sort of something has decided to lay a shroud on all of you. I, it's it's probably easier if I just begin. <laughs> she sits down and she closes her eyes, and as she does so, a faintly at first, but quite a vivid light appears on her forehead in the shape of like a, again a crescent moon, 
and she does so. Sm the smoke from the incense starts to drift around you all and then coalesces in front of her. And you can see kind of the small creature start to coalesce from the smoke. It's only about, about a foot and a half high. It has seems to have bat-like wings that come out from behind it. Bi bipedal and just made of smoke with like light pinpricks of purple bluish light for eyes and it just kind of perches in front of her as she chants and almost mirrors her pose uh gavriel you see this the thing you sensed before uh whatever familiar she has it seems to have taken form give uh, a little nod again okay if you do so you all of you kind of take a moment and close your eyes and one by one, you seem to not fall asleep, but become, feel almost dissociated from yourselves. And just for brevity's sake, we will go in the order of when you entered the temple, because that's as good as order as any. So, Mercy, you open your eyes, you are stood in darkness you see nothing you can okay. see your hands in front of your face you can see yourself but you look around and there's nothing there's no floor beneath you there's no walls there's no there's no ceiling there's just darkness um and you hear screeching and growling and laughing from all around you. You can hear hundreds of sounds that start off low. It's like whispers in the distance. But the more you stand there, the more you can... The noises get louder and some are more prominent and you hear like a cackle, you hear a, an alluring whisper, you hear the thunder of footsteps all from all sides of you. And again, you don't see them. You don't see anything. What do you do? I will... I will steal myself. I will. I will calmly put my hand on the hilt of Benedictus. He isn't there. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> and you, you go to look and you see that you are naked. Oh, test. Yeah, literally. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's just you. <laughs> That you have nothing with you is just you. I'll I'll call out, see if anything answers. You you call out and you hear it echoing, and it echoes out and out and out, and the noises go quiet. Make a perception check for me. Okay. <clears throat> Um, uh, skills, shit, skill. Uh, 19. 19. You can't hear anything, but you can smell something. It smells stale. It smells like old and musty. Do you know, like, say a room that hasn't been opened for years? Like an yeah. old attic room, so you can smell that. You can't smell anything, but it just feels stale and almost suffocating with how thick the air is from it. Okay. And you start to hear the noises start up again, one at a time this time. And just as you hear, you hear a almost like a hyena's kind of cackle. That's halfway okay. between a like a roar and a cackle, and. 
you get knocked back slightly. Okay. And you're kind of shocked, and you look down, and there's a gash, like three gash marks down your down your front. And just what, as down you, my chest or lower leg or just down slightly down your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then you look around for this noise, and again you hear a sucking noise as something hits you in the back, and you feel that. And then something else bites you in the side. And you can feel a dull pain. You feel the fresh pain. You feel something else <clears throat> kind of, you hear like met almost metallic clacking on the floor, on whatever floor this is. But before you turn around, but before, as you do that, the noise seems to come from behind you again. And it hits you straight in the back and you hit the floor as you can feel hot, the hot liquid of your blood running down from everywhere. And you can feel the wounds opening as if for the first time. And you turn, you're turning around. You can't hear where every, anything is coming from. And just as you reach up, you feel this presence above you. And you can smell like hot, rancid breath. And just as you look up, you hear a roar and a pain on your front and your back. And you open your eyes. And you're sat, cold sweats, in the temple again. And the wounds, they still hurt on your back, but they're throbbing, each and every one of them. Runt. You open your eyes. <clears throat> You're not naked, first off. Oh, okay. well, that's, that's good. You look ahead and you can see walls. You look in front of you... Oh. Long corridor. Behind you, long corridor. To your right and your left, walls. And you look up and you can see these walls tower 60, maybe 70 feet high. You can just up see the sky above you, like an um, overcast grey sky in the very distance. You have to really crane your neck to see it. Right. How far apart are these walls? They are about Six feet apart. Mm. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to go forwards down the corridor. Okay, you go forwards. Uh, you don't hear anything as you go, but you get to <clears throat> you walk for maybe five minutes, maybe half an hour. You can't really tell. It kind of just seems like a very almost like a Scooby Doo episode of the same scenery over and over again. You're walking forward, and eventually you reach a wall. And there is a path to your left and a path to your right. Uh, let's go right. Okay. You go right and you're walking. And again, it take, you don't know how long you're walking for, but eventually you reach a crossroad and there's a path in front of you, a path to your left, a path to your right. Uh, let's go on the path to the right. Okay, you go to your right. You keep walking for an hour this time, maybe two. You look above and the sky isn't changing. Like, the day, the sun isn't moving. You can't see the sun, but, like, nothing is moving. Nothing seems to change. And as you're walking, there's another path that veers off to the left where you can keep going ahead of you. I'll keep going straight on. Okay, you keep going straight on. You keep walking. You keep walking. And again, a path to the left, a path to the right. It just seems endless, path after path after path. No matter where you go, you're just met with more walls. Out of curiosity, am I suddenly transported? Sorry, I can't hear you cut out just at the second half of that sentence. So out of curiosity, have I suddenly been transported to the Beatles? Another, uh, another what? Sorry, again, you're cutting out. Oh, he's no. If he's been taken to Crete, if he's in the labyrinth, I believe. Uh, you don't recognise it. <laughs> Right. Um, cool. What were the options again? Remind me. Left or right, was it? Yeah. Again, you just keep going and there's just one direction after another. And as soon as you start walking, it just seems like the same corridor. <clears throat> right. I'm going to turn around and go back. Okay. As you turn around to go back upon yourself, you look and you can see standing on an... It wasn't there before, but... There's what looks like a small sapling growing from the ground. And perched on top of the sapling is a bird. Uh, it's an owl of some sort. 
just sat there, tilting its head and looking at you. I tilt my head and look back. Okay. It looks at you and then, without warning, just flies in right up into your face and heads straight towards you. And you put your arms up to block it because to protect your eyes. And as you do so, your eyes open and you are back in the temple. Kaya, mm. you are in a darkly lit room. Mm-hmm. A dimly lit room, sorry. Darkly lit. It's, you can't tell where you are, but you are sat at some sort of desk. And it smells almost familiar, but you can't quite place from where. It doesn't seem to be any windows. You can't see beyond, like, maybe two feet out from you in dim light. Okay. I'm going to get up and have a look around. Okay. You go and you move around and the light seems to follow you. You don't know where from. Almost maybe it's emanating from you. And you walk for a little while and you see a bed. What's on the bed? There is... Nothing on there except a dagger. Not the one you're thinking of. I'm fairly plain. Going, I'm going to go and have a proper look at the dagger. Okay. You pick it up, and as you go to look at it, it turns. It's you're not holding a dagger anymore. You're holding a piece of charcoal in one hand, and then parchment in another. And you. Look up from them, and you're looking at the desk again. Then I'll have a look at everything that's on the desk. You see, again, there is nothing on the desk. There is just the wood itself, writing implements, paper, and what looks like some sort of wax seal stamp with a dove on it. Try to guide me through this, and I'll just sort of like start writing on the paper. Okay. Just you start writing, and you're just scribbling absentmindedly, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> not really paying attention to what you're putting on paper. Just having faith in Aphrodite, and you look down, and you've written after maybe a couple of minutes, and you fill the page, and you look down, and you've just written the same sentence over and over and over again and that sentence it reads a whore of Aphrodite will never be part of this family and then you feel a soft touch on your shoulders a feminine hand and you turn around you smell you can't really see anything you can just see light like dazzling light as if you've turned around into headlights or like an open room you can't Mm -hmm. see what it is but you hear a voice you can't understand what it's saying but it's like a comforting mother telling you it's going to be okay and you feel the tears go down your face and as you close your eyes to wipe the tear away you open your eyes again and you are back in the temple Gavriel (coughs) You open your eyes, and you are on a boat. There is the sea on all sides. And you seem to be the only one on said boat, but it's moving. It's moving with the wind, but you are alone, as far as you can see. Checking the water around the boat. Okay. Make a perception check for me. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, you look around. You can't see 
you look around and you can't see much. You can see, although you think you're moving, the anchor is down. It's a relatively simple design, but we won't go into how anchors work then. But yeah, the anchor is down, but you seem to still be moving. And <laughs> pull the you anchor up. Hmm? I didn't say pull the anchor up. Okay. You go to pull the anchor up, and as you're pulling up, instead of an anchor, you see a hand holding onto the rope. And as you keep pulling, you recognize that whatever this thing is, is wearing the same armor as you. It is a triton. Older than you. And a bit more grizzled. They don't have the same cuts and scars as you do. They're more at peace with what they're wearing. They're wearing the exact same armor that you are. And instead of a trident or a lance, they just have <clears throat> a short sword. Drop it back in the water. Okay. You go to do so, and it just hangs on and starts to climb up and just comes over the side and brushes themselves off. And you look, and they've got the exact same eyes as you. It's like looking into your own eyes in a different person. Back onto the other side of the boat and just keep my back to the side of the boat. Okay. You back up. There's a hand on your shoulder. And you turn around, and this thing stabs you. And then you start, and it's you. You're not holding the sword yourself, but you're not holding the sword. You're holding the rope again. And you're pulling. And you pull up, and this time it's a female. The same hand comes up, but it's a female. And it's a different race. You're not sure what, but their skin is blue. And it seems smooth and almost like seal blubber. But they're beautiful for what they are. And you keep pulling. And as their hand goes over to the side, they pull up. And with a dagger, they stab you in the side of the neck. And again, it's you holding the dagger. But you're not holding the dagger. You're lifting something by the shoulders over the side of the boat again. And you pull them up. <clears throat> and you push them onto the ground. This one seems to be unconscious. And what you see is what looks like maybe a tiefling. Old again. Wearing the exact same armor with a long beard, bronze skin, and long white hair that matches the beard. And they are unconscious and breathing sh with shallow breaths. They don't seem to have a weapon. Try to heal them. Lay on hands. Okay. You do so, and as you lay on hands and your hands glow and go to theirs, they almost mirror it and they do the same. And they sit up with a start and look at you. And they look around. And you see their eyes again, exactly like yours. And they just say one thing. What do you see? The cycle has to end. And then they push you, and you feel yourself falling off the side of the boat, looking up at the night sky. And you see the moon moving across the sky, and you realize the reason you weren't, you were moving with the anchor down is you weren't moving in location, but time was moving around you at a faster pace yeah. that almost made it seem like you were moving. And just as your back hits the water, and you feel that hard slap across your shoulders, you lift with a start, your eyes open, and you again are back in the temple. And you all look around, all visibly shaken, with your eyes open, breathing heavily. Um, Luke? Mm hmm Can you make me make an intelligence check? Sure. Go for it. For, or whatever's suitable to, for Gavril to understand what Ken thinks he understands. Well, no, you just have your ideas. Because if you figure it out, you figure it out. If you want to ask for more information, then I might make you make an intelligence check, but you can have your own ideas. Okay. Runt. What did you just say? Uh... Sword pigeon. 
It was it was a big pigeon. It was a pigeon on a tree, small tree. Okay, and you were in a place that you recognised or didn't recognise? Did not recognise. It was just a lot of uh, lot of walls, big walls, very tall. And you were in your body or someone else's body? Uh, As far as I'm aware, mine. But somewhere you've never been. My body, somewhere I've never been. Big walls, lots of twisty, tiny bits. Tree behind me, big fat bird on top. Okay. Everyone else saw things in their bodies, other people's bodies? In my own. Definitely your own body. Yes. In a place you've been before. It felt familiar. Okay, not the same. Mercy? Yeah. Your body or someone else's body? Definitely mine. In a place you've been before, are you in one? I was um, nowhere. I was nowhere. The priestess is still here, I assume. Yeah, she sat eyes open, just the smoke's gone now. Uh, and it's kind of dissipated as natural. The symbol of light has gone from her forehead and she's just sat patiently, politely, while you kind of figure the things out. With kind of a an empathetic half smile on her face. Are you aware of what you've just shown us or what you've allowed us to see? I'm not. Sorry. All, all I can tell you is that whatever was holding this back from you has started to fade and as you go on with your lives your journeys more may come to you i don't know how i don't know if it'll come with time or if you'll have to try and unlock these yourselves but i have started whatever it is needs to be started i think it's more apt to say you've continued Possibly. I do not know. All I knew, there was something oppressing you, and I had to do what I could to help, as was necessary. I feel like we are all at a crossroads. Which is that others have been out previously, which I'm sure you can appreciate. I do not, again, I do not know what you have before you, but you are all definitely at a crossroads, which is why I was given permission to help you along whatever path you have now chosen. So, I am relatively certain that I just experienced my predecessors, several of them, and an instruction that the cycle had to end. I would have imagined you would have experienced something to do with your lineages, but perhaps that's something more individual than what each of you experienced, and you each experienced something unique to you. Did you get any kind of instructions like the cycle has to end or anything seemingly cryptic? None of you? No, I uh, I just got a face full of bird. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I had a literal void and noises and things attacking me. Something is watching out for me, I know that. Someone is watching out for me. Right, I'm only the only one that's just really confused by this whole situation. You got a bird to the face. Yes, but I imagine any subtlety or symbology may have been lost on you. I'm sorry, what 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 can you read into a bird? What kind of bird was it? Some birds have meanings. Um, um, pigeon. It was. I think it was an owl. Um, it might have something to do. Maybe well, that's the only thing. An owl. Yeah, an owl. You know, 
big, quiet, big eyes, head does weird things. Uh, a hunting creature, a creature known as a, uh, a predator, a wise creature. That creature definitely that does not sound like a me. Lot of symbology or teaching. Right, Kaya, so let me tell you about the birds. <laughs> Is it a good bird? Is it a bird that I actually want to hear about? <laughs> no, I just assume teaching. Okay, tell me about this bird. Is the bird the word? I, I hear <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> descended into family guy yeah. I, I don't foresee the conversation about the bird being of much importance to me so I'm going to uh, uh, Gavin is going to leave and go towards the or excuse himself and go towards the uh, the Poseidon shrine okay you can do so unless anybody else wants to do something we can cut straight to a Gavril can I ask the uh, the priestess about the bird so what what meaning might an owl have do you know you can, yeah. Uh, we'll go to Gabriel first, just because he said first. Um, so I'm going to go to the shrine and try not to echo the last time I said I was going towards this particular shrine. <laughs> and I'm going to contemplate openly in front of the shrine, towards Poseidon, asking if there was a problem with my predecessors, or if there was a problem with those who have been chosen to do what I have been chosen to do, and if perhaps following with the Delta forces actually what Poseidon wants or simply what those people within Delta Force want me to do okay. if breaking apart from them might yield further might be more appropriate and better for Poseidon as we've already taken out two targets without the rest of the Delta Force if they are actually what he wants me to be doing or not. I'm looking to see if maybe another route that I should be taking as offered by uh, by Hecate, who obviously helps people on paths and decisions and portals and things. Make a religion check for me. Runt. Yes. So yeah, you you're just asking what an owl means. I'm I'm describing in detail what it is that I saw and asking whether or whether I'm completely adrift from this otherwise chaotic vision. Okay, um Well uh it does definitely, as your companion said, sound like symbology for Athena. Uh you say you're in a labyrinth? A remains yes. of some sort? Well, it seems that way. Well, I, I'm sure you've heard legends of your race and labyrinths. It could have something to do with that. Um, I'm sure you're all aware by now that Athena herself has gone missing. Um, so maybe there's a connection there. Maybe it's a message that she's lost or that... I, I, I honestly, I don't know, but it do, it could be a thing. It could be Artemis. It could be a predator bird of Artemis. It, I'm not sure. So I have to go to the lab. I honestly do not know. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Gabriel, you're sat there and you, <laughs> you're praying and you normally get answers to your prayers but this time you kind of feel a reluctant resolve of it feels like Poseidon did hear you but is choosing not to answer okay 
Okay. Okay. So I'll to the back rest of the group and then go and catch up with them. Okay. As you're all sat there, um, Alpina goes, I will... I have a lot of work still to do. I will leave you all... Use this room for a little longer if you like, but we may... We will have to come and do our work soon. I can give you a few more moments to yourselves, but I will be outside until that time. Okay. She stands up, she bows, um, and makes kind of a moon symbol with her hands, and then walks out and leaves you to yourselves. I get straight up and go and sit in front of Mercy and just make certain that she's okay, that whatever it is she saw hasn't affected her too much. Mercy? Mercy? Yes, dear. You okay? It's, it's fine. It's pain. I understand pain. I know. But it doesn't mean that it wasn't difficult to see whatever it was. That's the problem. I saw nothing. But it doesn't I, mean I, that you didn't. I only felt... Doesn't mean that you didn't hear and feel things anyway. I I'm, I'm, I may need a moment alone if you will indulge. Certainly. I'm actually then going to get up and leave the shrine. Okay. As you go to do so, you're about to leave um, as Alpina kind of returns back and says, Oh, sorry. Um, so I don't mean to interrupt. I know you all have a lot to do, but there's quite a skittish uh, Spartan fellow outside. He said he was sent to come and find you. Something about a Delta Force arriving. Oh, excellent. Okay. Uh, he said it was urgent and then you want to know as soon as that happened. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And we'll leave it there. For tonight. Thank you for joining us, guys. <coughs> we are definitely at a crossroads for the party. Uh, <laughs> should keep them busy for the next couple of weeks and you guys as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to froth about it, we're on various group chats. Uh, I think most of the people watching were in a group chat as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Hope to see you soon. Uh, there will be, I believe, there will be a Swords of the Bind episode before our next stream. That is next Thursday at most likely half seven, but I will let you know if that time changes. Please tune in for that as well. It is with Ichthus the GM and basically the gods as players in a different country. Yeah. So yeah, please tune into that campaign. It's just starting. So uh, if you're looking for something new to start up, please tune in. It's very good. Mm -hmm. It is very good. Again, uh, if you have, if you can, like, follow, share, shout about mm -hmm. us. You know, I'm not above. I'll sell out. I don't care. But yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. <laughs> we'll see you all again soon. And remember that something is watching.